Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special Hockey Royalty Live trade deadline edition. My name is Russell Morgan. I'm here with uh, my good buddy, my good old pal, my colleague, the brains of Hockey Royalty, Mr. Joe Paterino. Joe, how are you doing, sir? Yes. Very good. It's just and it is afternoon <laughs> over here. It's a gorgeous afternoon here in Rochester, New York. That's right, Dad. Very right. nice, sunny. I don't know what the temperature. I think we're pushing fifty, which is really nice. Oh, uh, so it's a great, oh a great uh, March eighth right now. So I'm ready to rock. Uh, we've had some action today, Russ. Obviously, nothing to do with the Kings directly. A couple people maybe linked to the Kings that are gone elsewhere, but. Um, so do you want to start right there? Just jump right in. And the, the big one off the off the today was Toffoli, right? I know Gensel went yesterday was a big one, but but Toffoli today, Russ to Winnipeg. Yeah, that was uh a name that was tied to the Kings. Sorry, I'm trying to get our little banner going, make us look a little professional here. Um, but yeah, that was a name that was tied to LA. Here we go. Look at us, looking looking all high there and mighty. Nicely done, just nicely just done. To be, just to be candid, I'm running on like four hours of sleep. I've had I'm on my second cup of coffee. Uh, excellent game last night. I don't know if you got a chance to to watch it, stay up late to watch it, or watch the replay. But we can probably dive into that. Yeah, recap the game. I didn't bit. watch it but, last night. Yeah, yeah. But yes, watch some stuff. You didn't okay. Oh no the 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 two and a half hour live the uh, the show that we did the night before that had me up till pushing one a.m. That took a lot out of me for the uh, for the Thursday game. I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Um, but yeah, uh, dude, Tyler Toffoli is a Winnipeg Jet, and it seems like the Jets are turning into the L.A. Kings n- North. Um, I-, I loved your comment or your tweet about. Uh, seeing if they rather want to just want to borrow the form blue and gold too. Blue and gold because it certainly <laughs> seems that's the the way they're going. I have to say, I actually wasn't too shocked at the price. Um, I know there was reports out there saying that that New Jersey was asking for a first round pick and an A and a B prospect. And as soon as I heard that. I was just like, uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, unless New Jersey is really just going to wait to the actual deadline and hopefully someone bites. But, I mean, you see some of the deals that are coming around. It just – a first-round pick and a prospect for Tafoli, who was a pending free agent, just didn't make a lot of sense. So, yeah, uh, to see it be well, – what it end up being? A second and a second fourth and a third. is what it ended up being? I think, uh, I was be it a fourth there. or a third? I want to say it was a second, second and a third. Second and – yeah, one of conditional. Either one of those. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh, 2024 third round pick and 2025 second round pick and 50% uh, salary retention. So not too pricey of uh, a cost there. And first, before I, we go any further, I just want to say what's up to our chat because, Joe, we got 60 more people in here. There we go. Ready to rock. And – just want to call out some people. Dalek Evan says, "Sup guys, Dalek Evan, what's up? What's up, man?" CJ, hey Russ and Joe, hey, how we doing, CJ? Hey, uh, what else we got? Gwendolyn says, "Yay, short, short, and simple. I love it." Gwendolyn, what's up? Um, and some then sarcasm Dan in says, the "Morning slash afternoon." So he's, he's yeah. Exactly. I Appreciate feel like we're that. Get a lot of sarcasm from Kings fans <laughs> uh, today. I had going on in the background. It's just kind of annoying. Me. Um, but yeah, uh, Kings Rules also says, "Hey guys, hey Kings Rule, how's it going?" Um, but so yeah, the t- Tyler Toffoli deal. I didn't see it being too expensive, to be honest with you. Um, so when I heard the reported price, first in the IMB prospect, didn't see that happening, and sure enough. He goes to Winnipeg of all places for a second and third and 50% retention too, which kind of came late and I guess surprised a little bit of people that was retention tied to it. But I think it's a good deal for Winnipeg. What do you think? I agree. I mean, I, I similar to LA, I, I do wonder if there's something that Winnipeg could do with their, with their blue line. I don't hate the blue line per se, but 
it's probably if there's an area of weakness, I, I think that may be it. But, you know, they get an opportunity to add, um, you know, a pretty good score at a, at a decent price. Um, we talked about it on our last podcast the other day about how I, I wasn't all that it depended on the cost, you know, and I think I probably would have been comfortable with a second and a third. Um, but again, as we talked about the other day, that everybody that was so happy about how little LA gave up to get rid of Cal Peterson's contract, how much would you like a second round pick today as, mm-hmm. as we sit here at the trade deadline? So, um, yeah, I think it's good for Winnipeg. Obviously it adds, it's another team in the West that's, that's bulking up. Um, I still, I, I don't think that they're at the level of some of the other teams, the Dallas, Colorado, Edmonton. But hey, this is a good move for them. We'll see if they add anything else. I don't know what their cap situation looks like for the rest of the day, but um, I think that's a good uh, a good add by them. Yeah, it certainly feels like a buyer's market today, right? I mean, some of these deals that are coming in. I mean, I was talking with Andrew No about this last night at the game, and I. There, there haven't been that many first round picks that have been doled out really at all. And usually you see like first rounders be thrown around like candy for rentals. And that doesn't seem to be the case this year, um, especially with all the salary retention that's taking place this year, too. Uh-huh. So, I mean, you're getting the sellers are, are understanding where the market is at and understanding how little space some of these buying teams have. So they're willing to to maneuver and make some uh, adjustments in order to to get those deals across. And I mean, I mean, you look at what Colorado's done. You look at uh, Nashville's even just made a trade for Jason Zucker for a sixth round pick, which is very inexpensive. But there's no salary retention there. So, I mean, for Winnipeg to make this move, I, I agree. I don't know if they're necessarily there with teams like Colorado and Dallas and maybe uh, Edmonton. But I mean, the playoffs are crapshoot, man. <laughs> it's yep. thing. Especially it's, when you got Hellebuck. Especially yeah, when you got Hellebuck. Exactly. You got the goalie there. Uh, magical things can happen. And we've seen it in LA, right? They do still have some money. Um, I did Winnipeg. see somewhere that they were looking maybe for a blue liner still. Yeah, so. because they've got a few million in cap space, and that's actually with 24 skaters, according to Cap Friendly right now. So I don't know if they've made a corresponding move with the addition of Toffoli. But, so they have a little bit of money to play with to go add a, uh, a depth defenseman. And I think I would not be surprised to see that happen. Speaking of depth defensemen, um, we saw Edmonton add one of those. I think we talked that we – we kind of expected them to add a defenseman in addition to Henrik and Carrick, and they brought over Troy Stetcher to add a little bit of depth to that blue line. So, yeah. um, you know, I think they they did a nice job too. But I agree. I like the, the, to, to Foley to Winnipeg at the cost. So, um, and like I said, there just wasn't any room. You know, the Kings don't have anybody that can bury on LTIR until the end of the season. So they have to make room for the people that are coming back. And the only way to make room, we've beat the dead horse, is – is Matt Roy would be the only contract to go out, but that's a tricky one because Matt Roy is a good player and Matt Roy gives them a better chance to win this season and win around this season. So does it make sense to trade Matt Roy? Um, so that's that's kind of where they're at. It's a tough spot. Um, but yeah, again, another Western team making a, a good addition at the deadline. Yeah, you look at it and every single team that's in a playoff spot in the West has made some sort of addition in the last few weeks or so. And I mean, you go with Colorado who's getting middle stat. I know they had to pay Byram to do that, but they also brought in Sean Walker. Edmonton got Henrik and Carrick. Uh, Dallas, obviously with Tanev. Winnipeg now with Topoli. They already added Monaghan. Nashville just picked mm-hmm. up Zucker. Uh, Vancouver, who knows what Vancouver is going to be doing, but they already had Lindholm. And, and they, were kind of wonder- they were poking yeah, around They were Yeah, and they were Gensel. in there was that uh, rumor that they were poked around Gensel. So it's, it's, it's weird, right? Because we've, we talked about, and we kind of were on the same page where if the Kings were going to make a move, like going for a forward just didn't really make too much sense. Because if you kind of look at the way that their roster is going to shape up when everybody's healthy, yep. I mean, you have to get to play on the third line and he's been a 60 plus point scorer in the NHL, 30, 30 plus goal scorer in the NHL before. And the Kings went three and zero when he was in the lineup. So at forward, we didn't think that there was any need. Maybe some added, 
I don't know, fourth line experience, something like that. Right now, who knows? I mean, nothing, nothing too crazy. But if you want to trade a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick for Pat Maroon, uh, for example, who yeah, went to Boston exactly. today, something Maroon. like that. But what that does, Russ, so that basically means when everybody's back and healthy, Laferriere is in the AHL or Turka and or Turka is in the AHL. Is that, would you rather have that a fourth line of Lazat Maroon and, um, and Lewis, or would you rather have Laferriere? You know what I'm saying? Because that's the trade-off, yeah. right? Is you'd yeah. be losing one of these kids, and I, I, I'm that's an open question. I think you probably know my answer to that. But, I think uh, you probably know my answer to that too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so, but that's that's where you're at. I mean, you're losing these 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 kids. Um, so we'll see. Uh, uh, but the the tricky part here, of course, is is where we think the team's weaknesses, I don't think the Kings think their team, their weaknesses, right? I don't think they think their weakness is top four lefty the way we do. So if, yep. if I, if they do make a move, I think uh, it's for a depth defenseman, like Morverari, they have, I, I don't think there's any qualms of them sending him back down to the AHL if they acquire a veteran D man, right? If so, again, when Mike Anderson's back and maybe slide England to seven, I can see the Kings making a move for a, a, a cheap veteran d-man but at this point i'm not sure what that is yeah it, it certainly seems like i mean as awesome it, as it was for mobarara last night uh seeing him get his first goal i thought he played really well he's, he's always looks pretty good but it it's like you wonder like okay how is this going to look when the games really matter so that's kind of I, I, it's something that we haven't seen before right i mean mm -hmm. i can say like I mean, Mobarari could be a stud in the playoffs. Who knows? I mean, that's we just haven't seen him be played in that position before. The yeah. other thing is, is like the the other player that you would play in his position is Andreas England, and that just scares the living hell out of me. So, yeah, I mean, especially with some of the plays that he was making last night, I, I, the, the the hit that he took in the head, and then his response was totally warranted at that point. But the early penalty frustration, uh, we've seen his uh, inability to move the puck uh with it on his stick let alone making passes out of the zone could be limited and then when you're going up it probably against which seems to be unfortunately oh and actually just came across today that or right now the Ottawa's Parker Kelly is going to have a hearing for that illegal check to the head oh okay that just came across right now so that's pretty surprising which is actually kind of stupid because the refs didn't even call the play initially until England actually had to ragdoll him to the ice. So, yeah, Parker Kelly is going to have a hearing for that illegal check to the head of Andreas England. It was so clear as day. Like, I don't even know how you didn't see that. It was like right to the his head, right against the glass. So I'm glad that the, they're following up on that. But just to kind of uh, look forward, ah, man, I mean, if we're talking about what the Kings' needs are, we think it's, we think it's still the left side of the defense. Uh, but – do you agree with what I do? You think the Kings think their need is the left side of the D? So yeah, that's what I was going to follow up with. Is it certain? I don't know actually, to be honest, with you, because it seems like I would say that they don't think that there's a need. But I mean, would it surprise you though, like if they made like some kind of Troy Stetcher kind of move that they made a couple years ago, right? Not at all. Yeah, not at yeah. all. Yeah. So I mean. As much as they probably want to trust Mobarara, or they probably don't want to trust Mobarara, it could be a case where if nothing happens, then they end up playing him some playoff minutes, and maybe they figure out whether they want to play him or England on yeah. that third pair. So my only issue with with that is they're going to play England. They're not going to play Mobarara over England. Okay. And so that I mean, I genuinely, it's been however many games. The only reason more Ferrari's here is because Anderson's hurt. <clears throat> you know, and they kind of have, and they just they they. There's a couple reasons. One, Anderson's hurt, and two, there's an outright refusal to scratch England and play Clark and Spence. You know, in the same pairing without without England, there's just a refusal for that. So, I think they've they've made it pretty clear they like what England brings to the lineup. So. I guess that contradicts what I said earlier that I would expect them to make a depth defenseman because maybe they don't because I, I I think they like they've given no evidence to suggest that they are not happy with Andreas Englund and what he brings which is a little scary um, because I think it 
you know, there's, there's, to me, there's just a, a, a lack of um, modern day understanding of how defensemen play hockey with the Kings in general, not even just, it's not just Andreas Englund. Cause again, this isn't his fault. He's doing his job. He's doing exactly yeah. what he does within his skill set. That's not his fault. Um, that's an organizational talent evaluation and how they want to structure their team's fault is, is my take on that. So I just wonder, I, I think if the, if I'm the, we think the issue is D I, I kind of think that the Kings probably think to your point, they could probably use a fourth line, not tough guy, but veteran, somebody with a Trevor little bit Lewis of type or- a tougher, a, tr- a tougher, tougher Trevor Lewis. And so that's Got the it. other thing. Speaking of Lewis, another reason why I hated that deal so much is like, if you were looking for that type of player, Okay, if you identified around trade deadline time, we that's the type of player we're missing, that fourth line veteran, because Lewis isn't exactly like a hard to play against player physically, right? Like you add that guy later, the like the Bruins just did with Maroon. Go make your your Duhame or or Maroon or 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 depth player add at the deadline. Mm-hmm. Cause now if you do that, if you're the Kings, well, now you've got two guys who struggle to make plays with the puck on the same line doing the same. It's just, you know, I've seen what it just becomes redundant. It's, it, it was totally just, again, I, I, it's the more this season has gone along, the, the more frustrated I get with the construction of this roster. Yeah. And, and there's been rumors out there or Kevin Weeks put out that tweet last night that the Kings were in one of the teams in the market for a goaltender, which caught me off guard to be honest with you because i mean especially with the way there the game that cam talbot had last night the way he's been playing the last few games or so he's looked incredible to be honest with you he seems to be back to his all-star form so to hear that what was your reaction to, to that news to me the only way it makes sense is if you're getting a one like a okay like a linus hallmark if they move him you know uc Saros isn't going anywhere you know, Markstrom apparently is not going anywhere till the summer. So, like, if if the you were going to tell me the Kings are making a deal for Linus Allmark, like a significant, legitimate upgrade over what they have right now, you can sell me on it. You know, and because the Kings, and it also says, okay, the Kings don't need to worry about goaltending this summer because they because Allmark is this year and next. So you can sell me on that. To me, though, it feels a little bit like a waste of asset or assets because I just don't think goaltending is a problem. I don't think it's a big issue. Um, wait till the off season when you've got all these guys on expiring contracts and deal with it. Then I just don't think that there's a glaring need in that. This, they're not, this isn't the devils. The devils are like, have been leaking goals all season. It's just not the Kings and the Kings, yeah. you know, maybe if the Kings were to change their structure, which hopefully they do in the future and they actually play a little bit more of a 2024 style of game. Maybe you'll want somebody with a little bit more of a track record between the pipes, but we've now seen Talbot. We've seen Riddich. We've seen Copley all play well in the King system for periods of time. Just don't think goaltending is an issue. Yeah, it certainly seems, I mean, that seems to be the case uh, or what the chat thinks. JT says, I'm content with our goaltending. Uh, Dan says, Stay put on goaltending. Talbot is playing good. Uh, Sai says, uh, goaltending is not the issue. The defensive structure is what needs to be sound to be well. And I totally agree. I think this is perfect uh, comment right here from Sai. Um, this team wins games based off how they play structurally. And yeah. that's the only way that they're going to be able to beat teams like Edmonton, Vancouver, Colorado. And I was actually having this conversation with Jim Fox at the practice the other day. And I asked him because I was watching that. And I'll ask you too, because you watched that Vancouver game. And I think you caught it. Um, the first period, the Kings looked really good. The, it was, they seemed to be dominating. It was almost kind of like reminiscent of what they played, the, the game that they played in Vancouver. And then the second period, if you noticed, Vancouver just totally shifted the way that their strategy, the way they were attacking the Kings 1-3-1, and the Kings were kind of sitting back in the 1-3-1, almost to a point where Quinn Quinn Hughes was holding the puck in his own zone, and fans were booing him. If you guys remember, that's exactly what the Edmonton Oilers were doing to the Kings last year. 
I mean, to a point where Jay Woodcroft was literally holding out his hand, telling Darnell Nurse, like, hey, wait for their wingers to generate mm -hmm. speed on the outside. Yep. And then you have the guy in the middle. You just wait to get those wingers, get the puck deep, and you have go guys going 100 miles an hour converging on the whoever King's def defenseman is going to return or retrieve the puck. Yep. And it worked. Yep. And I wonder if that's starting to become the strategy that you're seeing teams implement going against the Kings. And it seemed to hurt them a little bit against Vancouver. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be something where the Kings are going to live and die by it. And when it's done well and they're able to not. So this is why I kind of prefer a little bit more of an aggressive one in the top part of the one, three, one. Um, because just to, just so they don't do that, you know, don't, I'd like to see that one apply a little bit of pressure. Maybe that brings the three up a few feet because think if, if the one is going to apply some pressure, that means that pass is going to come quicker, which means the pressure is going to come quicker. So maybe move the three up a little bit um, and, and and you attack at a, at a tighter spot. But by letting, especially you letting, think about it. I mean, if Darnell Nurse is standing there, or Quinn Hughes is standing there, you're letting Kel McCarr, and then you've got their wingers that are curling and you've got some pretty impressive players that are going to be doing that. And it, 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 all it takes is one well-placed pass by some really good players. And then they can either chip it and skate into the puck or just dump it deep and just be the first to the race. So mm -hmm. I, I just think that it is, but it is what the Kings are going. This is what they do right now. Right, they're, they're, there's not changing or what they're not going away from this. But I thought there were times, as I think I noted it last year in an article, it might have been during playoffs where, and I want to say it was Blake Lazat who was like applying pressure on that first guy, not just sitting back, letting them come through. That's where I'd like to see a, a tweak is if they can. Did you see how often you see the first guy in the one through one just stand there? Yeah, at the blue line, just and waiting, just, just waiting and letting you're letting them dictate the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't it's like too that. Passive. I don't like Way that. Too passive. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like that at all. Um, I would rather see you make Quinn Hughes make that play just a little bit more, or a little bit quicker, I should say. Because maybe if he has to rush it just a bit, maybe it's a play he doesn't want to make, and maybe your three, one of your three, wherever that's going, can jump into that. That's what I'd like to see, rather than just sit there and allow them to come at you and attack you with speed. It's just crazy to me. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, if you're gonna allow them to do that and allow those wingers to curl and generate that speed on the outside, and if your entire goal is to have teams dump the puck in behind the your own net, they're gonna win that race. It's like you're not gonna have defensemen who are at a standstill, standing in the positions that they're supposed to be in at a one three one in the neutral zone, beat wingers who are skating 20, 20 plus miles per hour into your own zone. It's just not gonna happen, and that's kind of what I feel like was the downfall of the Kings in the Oilers series is once Woodcroft kind of figured that out, then we started seeing them uh, yeah. break up that neutral zone a little bit. And I wonder like, too, like you, you, we see, we've seen at times like the Kings have somewhat been pretty successful against Colorado at times in the past and frustrated McKinnon. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that is because like you, when you get a player like Nathan McKinnon, who's just like, I'm going to go, go, go attack, attack, attack and try to do whatever I can to get through the neutral zone. You have players like Makar, too, who are, who feel like they can just beat anybody in the neutral zone, which most of the time they can. But when you go up against a team like the Kings, who have that solid structure in place, that's what they want. Hey, if you're going to skate right into what we're trying to do here, then sure, have yeah. at it. Yeah. But now when you have players and coaches that are starting to figure out, like, okay, let's play a little bit more patient here. Let's get some guys going in with some speed as opposed to just trying to attack at one player at a time. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be tough to beat. So yeah, like I totally agree with you. Like I'd love to see, um, and I'll have to ask Hiller about that this, and uh, without having him kind of uh, expose his strategy to the situation. Right. But I have to, I'd have to, I'd love for him to to wonder if there's going to be any adjustments to that point because you have to start. You can't let those wingers just generate all that speed and just sit back and watch that happen. Yeah. you have well, to at least put some pressure there if you're the F one. And to piggyback on that a little bit more, when you look at the defensemen of Colorado, they are much more willing than other teams to skate, right? You have yeah. Kel McCarr, Devon Taves. You've now added Sean Walker, who's really good at skating the puck. We saw he's been really good for Philly this year. Um, 
that's his mo you've got sam gerrard's another one that can skate with the puck whereas you know and now they've added casey middlestad who's a, a high skill player maybe not one off the rush per se but high skill down the middle so maybe that's why it's worked against colorado because they're used to having their defensemen skate with the puck rather than like you said with the darnell nurse or maybe some of these defensemen with edmonton they're more willing to say okay let's hold up make a pass and let our forwards just go attack the blue line so i don't think it's going to be a big adjustment for colorado if the kings do meet them i think they'll I think Bednar is pretty smart. He'll figure it out pretty quickly. Um, so I, I agree. I, and I, and I understand kind of not wanting to have the first guy, because if there's too much of a gap between the one and the three, now there's space underneath that gets that, that teams can exploit and then build up speed a different way. So I, I get that. I just think it requires you to maybe shift up a little bit. So if your ones are more aggressive, your threes, maybe if your threes, instead of starting lining up along the blue line or along the, the between the red line and the blue line, maybe you're between the offensive blue line and the, and the red line and you start it up a little bit quicker. Perhaps that's an, an option. So I, I just, I, again, I don't think the sit back version of it is going to be successful. I mean, let's be honest. I know the Kings have been a very good possession team for a lot of reasons over the last bunch of years. When's the last time they won a playoff series? Yeah. So are we are we seriously like for for all this talk about well you got to have a defensive defenseman and a right and a, and a offensive defenseman you got to play a structured style you got to play good D. It's been ten years. <laughs> <laughs> so. And look at look at what these teams are doing. Look at Colorado, for example. Colorado adds Casey Middlestat, not known for his physical prowess, I can tell you that much. But as importantly, look what they've done to the defense. Mm-hmm. The the defense, they added Sean Walker. They didn't go out and another added. smaller defender. Yeah, because what are they trying to do? They're trying to skate pucks, move pucks, and look at their their top defenseman, Cal McCarr, Devon Tapes. Sam Gerrard, Sean Walker. Now, yeah, they've got they've got Josh Manson and Jack Johnson, but that's two guys that are quote unquote you know defensive minded, not five. <laughs> so, and this is a team that's had way more success in recent years than the LA Kings have. Um, so, I, I'm sorry, I just. I, the Kings, and it's not going to happen now. I'm, I'm, I'm really beating a dead horse here, and it's not going to happen now. This needs to be. This needs to happen over the course of like, because of contracts. You know, like Avrakov's here for next season. This needs to happen over like a couple of seasons, probably a couple of off seasons. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you look at the the future uh, depth chart of the left side. There, who's there? Right, and yet they keep drafting, <laughs> and yet they keep. Drafting. Jacob Dvorak is another six foot five guy that was knock was his skating ability. Like, what are we doing here? Even though the the Kings think that's they were yep. totally high yep. in his skating ability, yep. but so I'm not going to judge him there. But Lane Hudson was right there, right? You had you want if you want to play this kind of what, the, but that's the thing though. It's like when you want to play this one three one style, the left side, the left defenseman is usually a little bit more sheltered in terms of his positioning, right? Because right. he doesn't need to be the one back there getting the pucks. You just have the you have him standing at the blue line and be that kind of stick check uh, specimen that that pretty much Gabrikov is. So that yeah. might be yeah. that worked perfectly. So I understood that deal. But then when you have uh, guys on the right side, I guess Dowdy does a pretty good job at it. Matt Roy does an okay <laughs> job at it. But I feel like when you're kind of w- wanting to do that one through one and force dumpins a lot more, you don't really have that many skilled puck movers yet. I know Jordan Spence can develop into that. Brant yeah. Clark can develop into that. But, I mean, they're not there yet. So, I mean, as much as we want to see them adjust to their one through one and probably cause a little bit more aggression up on, up ice, I probably not going to happen. It, 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 it may not. And – so we'll see. I mean, I think it's inevitable. It's going to have to take some time uh, for it to change, and it's going to change the right coach, you know, that wants yeah. to change it. You know, I, I am genuinely general curious. manager, the right general manager. Yep, yeah. yep. Because they they can they've not shied away from drafting and acquiring skilled right shot D, right? Just look. I mean, between Clark and Dursey, Faber's not big. So they had no problem with with Brock Faber. I know that obviously they traded him. Sean Walker, who's been here for a while, or you know before he was traded, but um, Jordan Spence, Sean Dursey, like 
they've compiled they had a com- compilation of all these very skilled right shot d mm-hmm. and they're so ingrained in their system that they refuse to get skill on the left side in a game in a day and age where skill is taking over uh, i mean it's not a surprise to see them be kind of left behind you know they're clearly good enough because their structure so good and they they have good players to to make playoffs these yep. last couple of years. Mind you, it's only been the last couple of years. They had a drought there for a little bit. And it would not get anywhere because they're losing to teams that are just, you know, it, it's a little bit bad luck running into McDavid back-to-back years, but yeah. that's a high-skill team and a high-skill player that can take stuff over, and, and that's just not how the Kings have operated. Hey, I'll say, I mean, there have been other teams that have figured out a way to beat McDavid and company. Kings haven't found a way. True. So it's not like he's an unbeatable guy or the Oilers right. are some unbeatable force. They're beatable. They haven't won a Stanley Cup yet with McDavid. Very so true. Very Kings true. haven't figured out a way to do it. And yeah, I'll echo your sentiment. It's just when you have all these guys and so so focused on defense and shutting down the neutral zone. Yeah, that's great. That's probably going to limit a lot of the chances and why that's elevated the game of Cam Talbot, David Riddick, and made them be the value type goaltenders that they are this year. But you got to score goals. <laughs> And when you don't have the defensemen who are able to move the puck up ice and you're not giving Brant Clark or Jordan Spence the opportunity to do so and you're playing Andreas England and Vladislav Gavrikov and all those players that are great defensemen, great shutdown guys, you're not going to generate a lot of scoring opportunities with those guys on ice. So that's why we're just wondering, like, hey, find a defenseman who can do that on the left side and maybe implement a little bit more dynamic playmaking ability to help you and try not to focus so much on that defensive end and try to give yourself a little bit more of an opportunity to score some on the other end. So I know Jacob, Jacob Overari did a little bit of that last night and that was great to see. And hopefully he can continue to shoot, to blossom a little bit. I'm excited that they gave him that uh, two year extension. I don't expect it to be or expect him to be any more of a, like a seventh fringe, maybe mm-hmm. lineup guy for the Kings going forward. They're playing him, paying him like league minimum. So it's not too big of a, a loss there, but uh, I guess we'll just t- kind of tie this back to, and we talked about this a little bit already, but Joe, we only have about an hour and a half till the deadline comes. So do you think that the Kings make a move at this point? No, I don't. Um, never say never surprises mm-hmm. happen. Um, I actually maybe I kind of wouldn't be surprised to see them make like an AHL depth move. Yeah. Um, kind of bolster the rain lineup a little bit. That and maybe, you know, again, just to add a little bit of depth from a just-in-case uh, standpoint if something happens in the NHL. Um, but it's hard to it's it's hard to say. I mean, I, I don't know that I see them making a move right now. It seems to be insanely quiet, which not – a, not too surprising, um, but also just we knew that the only way that they would really make a move, I think, is two two, two things. One, Arthur Kaliev. Two, Matt Roy. And, and I think the fact that those guys that are hurt can't maintain LTIR status, which is a good thing, by the way, that they're going to come back. Like Kempe Arvids and these guys coming back is, yeah. is a good thing. Um the fact that none of them can be LTI good hard. You want good players in your team. Right. Uh, it really limits him. So is is there a move for Kaliev still? Possibly. Is there a move for Matt Roy? I kind of think the Roy one may have been done by now if it, if, if it were there, but if they were willing. Um, so I don't know. Um, I, I'm leaning toward no right now. It's hard, it's hard to, to say yes at this point. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm trying to bring up the depth chart of the Kings right now, or I guess we can take a look at it when everybody's healthy. And it's 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 a good lineup. It's 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 a lineup that you can you see could probably win games or maybe win playoff games. I think everybody's kind of wondering will it be able to win a playoff series against teams like uh, Edmonton or Colorado? So that's, series. that's the issue. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. Series, well, yeah. can it, can, you're right. No, the, you're exactly right. Can it beat these teams in a seven-game series? Because they're not going to get swept. You know, it'll probably be no. like a long ground six-game series. Can the Kings win four of those six? Can the Kings win four of those sevens against one of those top teams? And that that is a that's the question right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Elliot Friedman just tweeted that he's hearing traction of Jake Allen to New Jersey. Okay. Uh, looks like that, Cy, that Cy just makes sense. Yeah, he's put it out there too. I mean, they. Little, I mean, it's a little, little late, too little, too late. I don't guess I don't get it right now, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems it weird is what at it this is, point. But he, does he have any more term left on his deal? Why would Brazil? I, I, I mean, I guess he's if he got to have that, some term left, right? There's no way that they're just yeah. Because I want to say they didn't they sign him. Didn't Montreal sign him to like a brief, like a two, three year deal or something? Or am I he's mistaken? got he's got next year, so okay. next year, okay, man, okay, man. three point eight next year. That's uh, we'll see, we'll see what that return is, I guess. But and the thing 3. is, eight million is they, dollars. That's 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 Phoenix Copley, Cam Talbot, and David Riddich put together to possibly be for for a for Jake Allen and to for probably be. To be a backup, you don't think they're going into next season with Jake Allen. They've made it pretty clear they want Jacob Markstrom. I mean, you know, you watch the Devils, and it's like, I mean, man, like that team plays with absolutely – like you you see a Kings team play with structure. That team plays with no structure, like whatsoever. <laughs> like you just kinda, I was watching that game the other day when they were in L.A., and I'm like, man, I just have no clue what their strategy is. I don't – do you – Yeah. what are they trying to do here? I think yeah, they just kind of rely so much on their young guys and their skilled guys to try to make plays, and it hasn't worked. And you leave your your goaltender hanging out to dry, and, I, and they haven't been making saves to help them out either. But it's just crazy because I mean, last year they were so good, you know, and, and to see yeah. them, the the difference. And I know they had some injuries to start the season, but it's it's a lost season at this point for them. But still, still really like that roster and. Honestly, Russ, probably a cup favorite for me next year. <laughs> I mean, oh man, I'm just glad I didn't put any money on them, and I was there yeah, was just me too. My prediction piece, uh, yeah, that's a that's a weird one. Um, I don't know. I I think it, I, I saw was watching TSN. They were doing like who's the most disappointing team this year, and it was between the Senators and the Devils. And I don't know. I feel like the Devils may be a little bit more disappointing than the Senators. Senators haven't yeah, made oh, playoffs, so it's like he, they were. I th- like the Senators are very much on the list of disappointing teams for me. The Senators, the Sabers, the the but but no one can be more disappointing than it. I don't know how anybody can be even close to that. that's a that was a cup contender for a lot of people. Um, yeah, you know, it's one thing to to struggle like Buffalo and Ottawa and not make playoffs and have bad starts and all that, but it wasn't a shock that they wouldn't make playoffs for New Jersey. That's incredible. That they're not making the playoffs with this roster, man. Yeah, I mean, you look at that lineup: Jesper Bratt, Nico Hischer, <laughs> Jack Hughes. Luke Go down Hughes. the list: Timo Meyer, yeah. Timo Meyer. Uh, I mean, Dougie Hamilton's been out all year, which that doesn't that, that doesn't help. Huge loss, yeah. But even then, you've seen teams be able to overcome losses like that and still at least make the playoffs, especially when you have a, a Philadelphia team who's not even trying to make the playoffs, and it seems like they might just fall into a playoff spot because Tortorella has those boys running. So, oh, man, that's that's tough for New Jersey. But back to the Kings, and I, I've seen a lot of people kind of mention uh, a rumor of, of, of P.L. Dubois, uh, Linus Omar swap, and I, I, that's just a total, total troll, you guys. I don't see yeah, that I... even being the, the case. Um if if the Kings make a move for a goaltender, I, I would expect it to be in the off season. I mean, I would be very surprised if they ended up trying to make a move this year, just by the way that Cam Talbot's been playing. Uh, David Riddick hasn't even he's been playing all right too. It's not like he's been playing bad either. No, so. no, there's just not a need. There's just like yeah. I said, it, 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 they've got Dell, so they must think that he's if something were to go happen with with Riddick or Talbot, yeah. they must be comfortable with Dell. Obviously, got an NHL experience, and all that stuff. So. I, I'm. I just don't think it's it's a need. I want to no. mention quickly though. Uh, I, I I just saw scrolling through that that um, Colorado. Like I looked like Middlestat was going to be centering Jonathan Druan and Val Nichushkin hasn't even played no. hardly at all this year, if at all this year, because he's been in the player assistance program. I want to say. Yeah, I believe so. It's a. Not many teams can bring back a Val Nichushkin at the deadline either. 
Um, <laughs> also, you're going to probably bring you back uh, Landis Cog too for the playoffs. He could possibly for, just- yeah. <laughs> so and I mean, I I mean. Colorado's doing exactly what Colorado should be doing. When you have Kale McCarr and Nathan McKinnon on your team, you need to be going for it every year. Like that's not even, yeah, you have to be trying to win. I mean, same thing with Edmonton. I'd be doing the same exact thing. And it looks like that Jake Allen trade actually just went down. Uh, conditional third round pick can become a second, depending on how many games Jake Allen plays for New Jersey. So that just got came across. Um. I, so, so I, pick I, up, I guess. Very, I very know. confused at this. Very. What, yeah. Why not just wait till the summer? Yeah. Let's, Maybe let's get him. Establish the Markstrom. Establish the Markstrom market in the summer. And if it's not there, then pivot to Allen. I don't get. I don't. I don't know. The yeah. The and the Jacob Markstrom thing is so weird too because it's like there there had to be a deal in place with New Jersey and somebody just kind of bowed out and. Because his comments about like wanting out and not wanting to be there, and I, I totally understand because you see all the trades that are going, and they're pretty much just sellers at this point. I mean, I wouldn't blame Markstrom for wanting to go be a, on a winning team, but now it certainly seems like everybody thought he'd go to New Jersey. That's not going to happen. So, yeah, where does Markstrom go? <laughs> Do you? Let's. I mean, let's just play hypothetical. Do you envision Markstrom being a? a target for the Kings in the offseason. I don't because of his contract. I don't know how they fit it. And I don't know that and and I know Calgary finally retained money on a deal. Was it um now I forget who who it was. I so my short answer is no because I, I, I it may have been I, I thought it was before that. I thought it was before that, but maybe I'm wrong. Um I, I don't see how they fit his money. Yeah. Excuse me. How many how many years does he have left? One year, two years? He's got two, I think. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's got maybe, oh yeah, two, two years. He's got two years left. He's got a no movement clause and that uh, uh, six million dollar cap hit for two years. So, yeah, where's that's, he fit? That's too pricey. Yeah. So I mean, we're talking about trying to fit Matt Roy in the lineup next year, right? Possibly, hypothetically. And do you? Um, so are you? What do we got? Sorry, Friedman just tweeted. Uh, Philadelphia has traded. Or he's quote tweeting. Philadelphia has traded Wade Allison. And Nashville. Yeah. Well, no. Philadelphia has traded Wade Allison, and Friedman quote tweeted it saying, "Believe this is to Nashville for Dennis Gurionov." Okay. So, Gurionov to Philadelphia and Wade Allison to Nashville. Man, Nashville, man. I, I like. The beginning of the year, like everybody was just riding off Nashville. Like once they mm-hmm. got rid of, um, who'd they get rid of? I'm in the off in the off season. Yeah, who they get Duchesne? rid of? Duchesne, O'Reilly. And... No, they brought in O'Reilly. Well, they brought in O'Reilly. Johansson. They... Yeah, maybe, but I forget. But uh, for some reason, everybody was just kind of riding off Nashville, and <sighs> that team's too good. That team's really good. You have Roman Yossi is like one of the best defenders mm-hmm. in the league, and Phil Forsberg is one of the best premier scorers in the league. Ryan O'Reilly's won games at the highest level. Andrew Burnett, man. Yeah. Coach yeah. of the year. And that so that is where where I think I underestimated because I was down on them. I mean, I didn't think they'd be like oh maybe at home when they traded him last year. Yeah. For us is, okay. it could be what you're yeah. thinking of. Um like I was I was down on them. Uh, not that they'd be bad, but that they would miss playoffs. Um, and I had them behind Seattle. I know I would have had them behind Calgary um, and L.A. But I think you're seeing the Andrew Brunette factor. And remember what how well he did with Florida when he took over for Quinville. How well – I know he was an assistant coach, but maybe don't underestimate that either with, with – uh, New Jersey is losing brunette yeah. uh, and now we see the magic that he's done in Nashville so uh, really really um, a lot of credit for to Andrew brunette that's for sure he's fun yeah Florida's done a pretty <clears throat> good job with their head coaches cycle I know they had Quenville and then obviously he had to go because of what he did in Chicago but then yep. you got brunette 
and then you get Paul Maurice. Yep. I mean, say what you want about Quenville, and it, it totally warranted for making him or getting rid of him. But I mean, those are all guys who have won games and, and at high levels and and improved at the teams that they've been on. So, I mean, Florida has to be the team to beat in the Eastern Conference, right? I mean, they have. To. Yeah. Yes, I think they've they have because Toronto has not done enough for me. Uh, I'm not excited no. by Joel Edmondson, and I forget who else they've added um, as kind of depth to the blue line. Labushkin, yeah, Labushkin. Now I think I saw Scott Wheeler's tweet that said like per- it was perfect. All, yeah, they're using all these mid draft picks to bring in just mid players instead of using them all to bring in like a premier player, like a high end defenseman, and <clears throat> yeah, it, like. I watched that. I watched the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I, like, like, what are we doing here? Like, why are we giving them? And I, I get it. They're they're the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, Jacob A says it right. They're the Toronto Cowboys. <laughs> they're the Dallas Cowboys of the NHL, where they just get all this glitz and glamour, but there's never anything of substance going on there. Like, and why I did they go get Sean Walker? Yeah, exactly. Why did they trade away? Um, who's the defenseman they traded away? Oh, Sandine, yeah. who just inked yeah. the deal. God. Exactly. Like, what are you doing here? You just traded away one of your better young defensemen for picks. And not only that, well, the, well, McCabe. They they brought back in that deal though Eric Gustafson, and then they just didn't sign him. They let Gustafson walk, and look what he's done with the Rangers yeah. for league minimum. I, I Man, I, I watched like I don't know if you've been watching some of their games lately, but I mean, I have ever not- since. Ever since William Nylander signed that contract, he's been so bad. I, the game he played against Boston, I think last night, he just had a terrible, terrible game. I mean, one of the first, I think it was the first or second goal that Boston scored was literally he, he Nylander pulled a Kevin Fiala like at the blue line, just trying to handle the puck. Uh, I think Frederick just easily tipped it off him, easy breakaway, beats Joseph Wall or, or Jacob, I think Jacob Joseph, I'm picking blanking on the name joseph wall beat, yep. joseph wall beats wool uh tweeners uh <laughs> breakaway i'm like man this team and on the other and what was the other day i was watching them play in an overtime game and william nylander like i like i don't know how this guy got 11.5 million dollars but he, i understand it's overtime too but the puck's going the other way he's like he like turns the puck over and then he's waving to the bench like by the red line the opponent's red line goal line saying like hey like change and he's like and it's like a three on two going the other way i'm like bro like you're just gonna give up the whole the whole extra point here uh it's, i don't know Ugh. what that team's not gonna win anything i'd be if, if they're gonna get uh, i don't like what they've done i don't like what yeah. they've done anthony demarco over the fourth period uh he covers the flyers says he thinks philly is up to something else and so stay tuned philly i can see them being quiet under the radar buyers but also scott lawton's name has been on the block quite a bit and hey vegas is going to try to chomp up every good player that's left with every ounce of cap space that they have so i wonder if 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 there could be something with philly and vegas at some point because i don't think philly is going to go too crazy and buy no. um um yeah i mean but we'll see credit, credit to keith jones and, and danny Bierre. they've got <clears throat> They've got something brewing up there in Philly. I mean, Tortorella's obviously got those boys playing pretty well. Um, you have Mitch Kopp in the system still. Yep. You have good, solid pieces already there that Tortorella seems to be getting the most out of, which that's the kicker. Never really seemed to happen. Yeah, and that's the kicker, right? So well, and it's funny is he's he for all the knock he gets, he allows his guys to be his guys. Mm-hmm. Um, who was the defenseman? I think he said it about Drysdale, but I don't think it's the first time he said it about letting him just letting him be, let him be a rover. Well, speaking um, of Philadelphia, it sounds like Eric Johnson is going to Philadelphia. There it is. I knew <laughs> Eric Johnson was going somewhere. Um, I don't know how much better that makes them, but that's a weird one, right? Well, I, I wonder, you know, they lost Sean Walker, and so they're probably looking at it like, listen. We're not going to buy because we're not really in a position to where you should be buying. But we're not. Well, we owe it to our team and we owe it to our fans to just not trade away Sean Walker and then play nobody and play up an AHL player that may not be ready. So they go get Eric Johnson and 
that's probably for like a sixth round pick or something like that. There's no way that price can be high. Eric Johnson's had a terrible season in Buffalo. Um, so I, that can't be nothing much more than a mid round pick and whatever, that's fine. You know, so it's a way to replace you're, you're getting worse by replacing Johnson with, with Walker, but you're bringing in or replacing Walker with Johnson, but at least you're bringing in an NHL defense who's played NHL games. And I can see that from, uh, from Philly's standpoint. And it's not a big buy, right? They're not spending a lot on that, I can't imagine. So yeah, it's got to be like a conditional, like six, maybe even seventh round pick. I don't expect that to be more than that. <laughs> um it's a little tough too. I mean, I, it would have been awesome to see Cutter Gautier, Gautier in in that system going yep. forward. Don't really know what happened there, but it's kind of unfortunate. I, I know they did pretty well getting Drysdale back in return, but it seems like <clears throat> Gautier is going to be a, a better player. Um, got a super chat here. Random stuff. Dollar ninety nine super chat. I appreciate it. random stuff. Uh, Thank you, random he stuff. wants to know if Winnipeg got better with Toffoli. And I know we talked about this a little bit, but why not? Let's talk about some more. What do you think? Do you think Winnipeg got better with Toffoli? I do think that. Uh, I think they had the space to add him, um, and I think that he's a proven scorer. Uh, at the NHL level, and I think uh, he's going to fit in real nice in their middle six, if not their – well, probably their top six, frankly. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's a good add. I think they had the room to do it. Um, they didn't have to pay a big price. So I, I like it. You know, I think you're seeing – you're going to see too, like I suspect, you know, tying it back to the Kings a little bit. You know, I think Velarde's hurt, so I imagine when he'll be back – then he'll be right back in that top six too. But also that moves Ayafalo and that keeps Ayafalo down probably on that four. He's played a lot of fourth line, which is where he, he should be. So it slots him in perfectly. He's not playing above where he should be, you know, and I think that that, you know, is a that's where he should be. So looking at you got a whole bunch of former Kings there, but I think it's a good ad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh uh, some people are asking when, or CJ wants to know when did Velarde get hurt again? He got hurt the other day. There, it's an upper body injury. Uh, nothing more than that. They're being really hush hush on that. But yeah, I totally agree. I mean, Savoli, obviously, great player. We know who he is. Uh, great goal scorer. I, I'm just curious what Winnipeg, how Winnipeg is going to perform in the playoffs. It seems like they've had trouble scoring. Uh, the chemistry has never really been there without Velarde there, which is so weird because it seems like Velarde's like the finisher for everything Nikolai e all the special things Nikolai Ehlers and, and Shifley are able to do up there. And whenever Velarde, they don't have a guy who's just going to tap pucks in uh, standing in front of the net, they just can't score goals. And Hellebuck's been a little shaky lately. Um, Mikey J says Josh Morrissey is a stud D-man. Couldn't agree more. Stud. Yeah, absolute stud. So he's kind of carrying Canada. the load there. But Fourth round pick, by the way, for Eric Johnson. I saw that. Yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, that was uh, maybe a little pricier than would have gone for for Eric Johnson, but um, decent price. Yep, and and, and a I, nod to the. I think it's a nod to the team to say, listen, yes, we got rid of Walker, but we're not abandoning you guys. Yeah, yeah, they're still giving him a decent chance, right? I mean, they're in a playoff spot, or for now. Right. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't seem like they're going to be losing a playoff spot. They just beat a team, a good team yesterday. I think it was Tampa last night. I could be wrong, but um, yeah. Oh man, we got 160 people in here, Joe. There we I go. Appreciate all you guys in here. This is great. Um, we got a little over an hour uh, till the trade deadline. If you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe to our stream. We are just. Like I think thirty people, maybe a little more, away from a thousand subscribers, yep. which was our goal coming to the season. You guys are incredible. It's been an, an outstanding and fun year for us to cover of Kings hockey. It's been a roller coaster ride. Never dull. Kings Never dull. <laughs> oh man, this season I can, uh, yeah. You start off with such a high. We went to January where we just like went right down to the valley, and we came a little bit back up, and we're kind of like. Going up and down, up and down. It seems to be things are kind of trending in the right direction. It sounds like Andrew and Kepe is going to join the team at practice today, which is good news. Mikey Anderson was skating in a red jersey just the other day or just yesterday, so that's good news. Um, so the boys are coming back. 
Uh, I saw Victor Arvidsson at the game after the game the other day. He seems to be walking around well, no limp or anything. So who knows how close he'll be back. I mean, kind of look at the Kings lineup. I mean, it's – it's it's we talked about it. It's a, it's a lineup that's built for the playoffs and built mm-hmm. to be successful for the playoffs. So I don't want to say, like, they haven't made a move yet and they won't make a move, but if they don't, like, it's not like they can't be successful in the playoffs. Yep. Let's let's put let's put the GM spin on it. Okay. Yeah. The deadline ads for the Kings are going to be Adrian Kempe, Victor Arvidsson, uh, when they return to the lineup. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then Carl Grundstrom should be somebody that comes back as well. So you're going to add three pieces. All three guys that can score. I know Grundstrom, people he's the people either love him or hate him, but he is capable of putting the puck in the net in the bottom six role. So had a pretty good playoffs last year, too. Right. So you're adding you are adding three forwards to the lineup that aren't there right now, which is goes back to what Russ and I talked about earlier, where we really don't think forward is a significant need here. Um, and I think you the Kings, you can be sold on the fact that they have their defensive structure that they want with their core group of defensemen and that they're comfortable with that. They're comfortable with the goaltending. Um, as much as I am itching for a fresh set of defensemen, like I, you got to be realistic. It's not going to happen in this offseason or this this deadline. It'd be nice to maybe add one piece, but I understand that there's going to be an overhaul in the way they play. So you're right. Like At times it sounds like we've been a little doom and gloom with the Kings because of the, the roster construction, the lack of movement from Blake, the additions the other Western teams are making. But I do think it's important to keep in mind that this is still a really good possession team, a really good team that controls expected goal share most of the time. Their goaltending is not a problem. Guys like you're getting guys back healthy. So there is reason for optimism in Los Angeles. Um, Mm -hmm. That optimism may be shut down real quick once you see, and you have to travel to Edmonton for game one of the playoffs again. But like there's reason for there to be some is, is I'm not saying there should be a lot, but I also don't think that it's, it's, it needs to all be doom and gloom, which I, I know sometimes we may be coming across that way, but it's, it's, it's not, I don't think it's the intent from either of us. Yeah. The thing that's interesting too, and I'm just going to bring this lineup. I'd use my handy dandy, handy dandy little snipping tool on windows here to, to snip the Kings roster. And I mean, this is what we expect it to be or close to it, what we expect it to be when everyone's healthy, right? You look at everybody. I mean, you have a top line that's been formidable. Quentin Byfield's turned into this absolute stud, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but he could be one of the best players to ever play in the National Hockey League. Um, Trevor Moore, Philip Deneau, and Kevin Fiala seem to be pretty stud line whenever <laughs> – excuse me – whenever they get it going. I need a little coffee. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, and Pierre Dubois. Excuse me, Joe. Take over for me. You okay? You okay? That's okay. I'm all right. Get a sip. Get a sip. <laughs> and and Pierre Dubois for all the the issues that he's had this season up and down. He's played better of late. Yeah, you know, scored yesterday at a good game yesterday. So he's played better of late. Um, Blake Lazat is back, adding a little bit more stability to that fourth line. And I just think they have a lot of options, Russ. Uh, in that fourth line too, you know, at, when all these guys get healthy, you can see Laferriere go up and down. We've seen Turcott go up and down the lineup. Grunstrom has played up and down. Kaliev has played up and down. I think that versatility is nice. I think they have. I think that's a good thing. Um, so hopefully, Russ, are we? Are we? Are we good? Are you? Are you back? I think with I'm us? back. I think okay. so. So yeah. Sorry. I appreciate everybody who was looking out on me, but yeah, <laughs> need some coffee. There. Russ, Russ to IR. <laughs> Yeah, me to LTR. We'll see how much money that saves me for the deadline. But yeah, um, Andrew Peaky just got traded to Boston. It seems like um, depth defenseman depth for them. Yeah, but yeah, you look at this lineup. I mean, we'll see what happens with Arthur Kaliev, but and who they want to play on that fourth line spot. I, I'm very excited to see what Alex Laferriere can be as a playoff performer. Um. I think he's built for the playoffs. I just I, – his game, he, he can bring a little phys- physicality to the to the game. I'm see what I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. Um, it's just – it's just 
this is going to be the issue right here. And I, I understand Brent Clark. Brent Clark had a, he had a rough game yesterday. I want to say his defensive game was kind of struggling a little bit. He only played a couple minutes. Jordan Spence. We'll see what happens there. If maybe they give Spence an option or a special look. Um, yeah, more seems like more trades are coming in. Jacob Zobril uh, heading to Columbus for Andrew Peak. That's Boston, right? Andrew Peaky is uh, uh, from Columbus. Uh, Zobril's from Boston. Zobril's Zobril. from Boston. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Talking so much, I'm starting to lose my voice already. Um, <laughs> Carter Scores says Brandon's going to yell at you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Problem trying to. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a lineup that can still be competitive if they don't make a move or, or two here before the deadline. And we have. We're pretty much at an hour from the deadline, so I don't know though. I, it's it's weird because you look at this left side, and this is, could probably be the left side that's going to be on the team next year. <clears throat> and we're kind of waiting for <clears throat> any sort of upgrade there. And <laughs> this, there's no real uh, future uh, upgrade that I see happening unless that something happens in the summer. It would take a shift in philosophy, whether that's Blake handing the reins over to a new coach who wants to do things differently or 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 if there's a new GM. Um, and you when, if that is the case, you wonder what does that mean? What does that mean for England? Yeah. What does that mean for, you know, you know, wh- how does the new GM or coach or whatever view anything with with Flats off Gavrikov, who will have one year left on his deal. Uh, you know, just that's a hypothetical summer conversation of if there's a change in coach and or GM, if there's a philosophical change to how they play. And not, I mean, maybe not even coach, you know, maybe Hiller has a different look. It's just, it's not worth changing at midseason, you know. Man, you talk about Hiller. I mean, his in-game adjustments are like a total contrast to what McClellan was doing early part of the year. <laughs> he And it's kind of what he, he told us straight off the bat. Uh, and his opening, his opening presser is, he said, like, if any player is, has the legs or if he feels players have the legs to get going or showing it in the early part of the game, he'll give them the opportunity and the ice time to, to use them. And it happened just last night. <clears throat> When he put Blake Lazat of all people on the first line, and I'm, I don't know, did, have you caught the whole game or no, the not game? the whole game. I've bits and pieces here and there, but I haven't had a chance. To, it's been a busy morning over here, so I have not had a chance to catch up on on the whole game. But I did see your tweet that um, uh, the in the Hangover tweet that the move of Lake Blake Lazat up paid dividends. Yeah, it's. I mean, he was instrumental in two of the Kings goals. He was on the ice for the Morara goal. I thought he, I thought he actually got a stick on it. It was Tim Stutzler who actually got the stick on it uh, for the Morara goal. And then he was on the ice for, he got an assist, I believe on whose goal was it? While you're looking former King defenseman, Tobias Bjornfoot has been claimed on waivers by the Florida (coughs) Panthers. Man, he's going everywhere. World or World traveler there, LA to Vegas to Florida. Nice weather. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So and Lazat got an assist on the Quinn Byfield goal. So yeah, two points. Um, I'm not sure if he was on the ice for the Dubois goal either. Who is this plus minus? Lazat was a plus one. Okay, so they only give him a plus one. Man, but yeah, I think. Uh, You'll get a kick out of this, but I think P.L. Dubois played one of his better half games, periods and a half, since his time joining L.A. Like the first, I think it was the second goal that Brady Kachuk scored. He kind of got beat a little bit, and I and uh, I think Talbot probably want that shot back. He, he like Kachuk's behind the net. Dubois trailing him. He curls around to the front, and and Dubois is like right on him, but he still is able to get a shot, even though he's falling to the ice, and it happens to squeeze right through Talbot's um Talbot's uh in between his legs. But I mean, he bounced back. He had the goal 
he's pretty much just standing in front of the net, just being a big body, being a big presence that he probably should be. And Kopitar with an excellent feed right on his stick. And he was able to tap at home. But man, I mean, Joe, I don't know if you've seen the the clip that the LA Kings posted. Uh, it's pretty much the entirety of leading up to Fiala's game winner. Oh. I mean, the back check, the back check that Dubois had that led up to it was outstanding. And that's something we need to see more of. And that was kind of what I asked uh, Hiller about. Was uh, I asked him about Dubois's game, and he he loved his he loved quote unquote his response to getting beat by Kachuk. And then how he responded with scoring the goal and then coming back and showing some uh, two-way ability and some defensive acumen, I guess, or, or uh, will or fight for a loose pucks in, in overtime. So that was good to see. And if I think if the Kings get more of that, yep. that, hey, that could be another big trade deadline piece for the L.A. Can we talk about Kevin Fiala for a second? Oh, because yeah, let's, let's do that. I saw a tweet yesterday, and, and I just – I, I, maybe I'm I'm misreading some of these, um, but it was actually by that Anthony DeMarco who was rep- responding to somebody in Minnesota who was saying they don't trust Bill Guerin to make a trade, a good trade or anything like that. He's he's a bad GM, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, I think he did, you know, he made w- he, one of the greatest trades in recent memory was getting Brock Faber in a first for Kevin Fiala. And it just comes, ac- maybe he didn't mean it like this. It just comes across as if, do we not know how good Kevin Fiala is? Do people? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm like really confused. He's so damn good, and I that's the second type of tweet I've seen like that about like, well, look at what he got Brock Faber in a first for Kevin Fiala. Well, no shit, Kevin Fiala is a really good player, and at the time Brock Faber was a, a good prospect. Don't get me wrong, but I to, to, it's almost as if he's underrated and is like underappreciated, and I don't get it. I mean, this this guy's excellent. Yeah, I mean, I, I was watching uh, Blackhawks Wild nationally televised game, and um, I think Pierre Maguire was commenting on it, and he, they were talking about they were hyping up Brock Faber. I mean, I like I get it. Like it's they're playing the Chicago Blackhawks. There's not many players to hype up there, so it's like he was talking about like, oh, he didn't he didn't realize that they got a first round pick in that deal too, and then he made it sound like, oh man, L.A. I'm like, oh. I'm like, dude, this guy has 100 points in his first 100 games with the Kings. Like, the first player since Palfi. Like, what are we doing here? I I don't understand it. I don't get what the, like, the, like, holy cow. Like, yeah, and I think a player like that, you gave up, you gave up a good prospect and a first round pick for a guy that you is a, a, a really good player. And then you extended him. I'm, I'm, what's the worst? I don't get it. I mean, uh, yeah, D- Dalek says Fiala is going to lead the team in points again. I don't think he's led the team in points yet since he's been here, but he was supposed yeah. to last he year. Was, he got, he hurt. got hurt. Yeah. Uh, he's pushing for a point per game with vastly improved defense. Yes. So that's one thing we have to talk about. His two way game under Hiller has been much better. Um, not taking as many pen- penalties. And if Byfield hadn't broken out the way he did this year, he'd probably be the best player on this team. Easy. He, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a little bit the the discourse behind Fiala gets because of his, I mean, his penalties and his lack of a two way game or turnovers. This is the mistakes. And, it's the mistakes. Yeah. This is what pisses me off, Russ, because it's the same reason people got so upset about Dursey. And now look at the season he's having in Arizona. You know, if the Kings, the worst thing the Kings could have done is bludgeon this fan base into no mistake defensive hockey because now they don't know how to deal with a player with skill that is going to make a mistake from time to time. Like, good God. It's, it's, it's so frustrating to me. Yes. He's going to make the odd turnover here and there, but good. I mean, what he's going to do over the course of a season is so far outweigh those couple of mistakes. It's just ridiculous to me, but I, I get so annoyed with that Russ. So, cause, cause the idea being, and we tweeted about this, I think, or something about this the other day. When England ices that puck against Vancouver, mm-hmm. nobody notices that there was an icing. Yep. And then JT Miller gets a point-blank shot off of that icing, and he zips it wide. And if it went in, nobody – there's – oh, the defensive zone breakdown. Nobody's talking How do you know about when it the – off? <laughs> nobody's talking about the icing that England had, right? But because it's not a direct – turnover nobody considers it considers it a mistake 
nonsense, <laughs> right? Like nonsense, because that icing almost directly led to a goal against. And luckily, Miller fired it wide. So the mistakes that Fiala makes or the, the mistakes that Dersey made, they are glaring in that they're trying to make an offensive play and it gets picked off and that looks bad when it gets picked off. Whereas a defensive player, a defensive defenseman or a defensive forward for that matter, he'll make the play and chip it off the wall, get it out of the zone. Sometimes it's an icing. Sometimes it's just in the neutral zone. And nothing quote unquote bad ever happens, at least directly off of that play. But nothing good ever happens either. So I, I, I hate that whole concept of how some people want hockey to be played. There's my rant. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Sorry. No, I think that, that needed to be said, to be honest with you. Uh, Dennis Bernstein, by the way, reporting Mikey Anderson and Adrian Kempe are practicing with the Kings today in red, no contact jerseys. We got awesome. Bernstein reporting that from the fourth period. Awesome. I think they're, um, I wouldn't expect them in the lineup tomorrow, although I wouldn't be surprised. Non contact, though. So, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. think they'd play if they're in a non-contact. I don't think Mikey would play. Adrian could possibly play because he was if he was dealing with a hand injury. I don't. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, there's no rush. Although sure. tomorrow's a, tomorrow's a big game. I don't know if it's not necessarily big in terms of the standings, but you're going up against the Dallas team. You probably want to. Yeah. Not, maybe exact a little bit of re revenge with how they played in Dallas early on in the season, and then kind of show that. I mean. <laughs> It's going to probably be big for Rob Blake, too, because if you're going to go up against a Dallas team that is gunning for it, they made a, that trade for Chris Tanev, and if if the Kings are going to sit back and really do nothing, then, I mean, Rob Blake's probably going to want the Kings to go out there and show them, like, hey, we may not have made a trade, but look at us. We can still compete with teams like Dallas, um, even though it's not the playoffs. So, right. I mean, it's going to yep. be a good game. I'm excited. It's a Yeah, it's a big one. I love um, – it doesn't seem like we have any other – I'm kind of perusing through Twitter. It doesn't seem like we've had any other moves going on. No. Let's uh, – what do you think about the Gensel trade? Let's talk about that. Yeah, good good call. Um, first of all, very seem to be the big name, right? Yeah, yeah. Very happy he's not going west. Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> Glad he's not going to Vegas or Vancouver or somewhere west. Um, I thought Carolina did a great job. Um, Carolina is another team where assets be damned. Go win the cup. Go try to win a cup. You know they are there. They're they're a team that's capable. They have great defensemen. They have a great group of forwards. Um, Gensel seems like a perfect fit uh, for a Carolina team and the way they want to play. So I um, I think that's a great get for Carolina. Great get for Carolina. Man, you look at the return that they had to pay. <laughs> it wasn't that pricey. And I loved uh, Sidney Crosby's response to asking, like, what, he, what he's thinking they're doing. He said, I just, I don't know. I didn't see that. Okay, I did not yeah, see that. Yeah, I think Rob Rossi tweeted it or had, like, an article about it. And he asked him, like, what – his uh, comments are on the on the trade or what he envisions the strategy from Dubas is, and he said, "Just I don't know." And they got like a bunch of pieces, but none of, of them it felt like no. And and uh, I want to give a, a shout out to um, Ryan Wilson, right for the Penguins for Hockey Buzz. He's actually a, a Rochester guy too. He I, he coaches another high school team as well. Uh, really, really great follow for anybody that's looking for Pittsburgh. If you're interested in Pittsburgh for whatever reason, like he's a really good follow. Um, he's like, I'd rather do a one for one deal. And I wonder, this is more of a phil philosophical question. I'll throw to you, Russ. Like, so Jake Gensel, he gets a package, right? Of a late, it's a first round pick, a couple of mid, mid, mid prospects. He's like, screw the pick. Give me one of your top couple prospects for Jake Gensel. That's it. Like, because you see so many times that these players go for these, they go for a pick and a prospect. They go for a pick and a couple prospects or two picks and a prospect. But the more pieces you add, the less each of those really is. It's just kind of a compilation of quantity, not necessarily quality. And it's like, just trade them. Go, go, go for a one for one. Get a, be willing to do that. Be willing to take a risk that you're not bringing in as many bullets but what you're bringing in is a really good one or potentially the highest potential of the bunch. 
That makes sense. Yeah, you're talking about if you're the team trading away the better player. Correct. Like say more stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Like instead of grabbing, I want I want like the Vegas or Buffalo or whatever it was. We want four first round picks for Eichel or you know. Well, that's fine. But maybe if you ask for something a little bit less, you can get maybe a mint potentially in a prospect. You know, mm-hmm. something along something along those lines where I'd rather have fewer pieces if they're better pieces. Yeah. Quantity over quality for sure. Yeah. I think I know I know Scott Morrow's on the Hurricanes. I'm sure I wonder what that if that was the original asking price. But it's just like, man. To see him not go for a first round pick, did he? Did he get a first round pick? Yeah, I think I think there was. Wasn't there a? Um, it was a conditional one. Y- y- yeah, it was conditional because they have to make the Stanley Cup final. That's what it was. That's the, the condition. Second. I think that's the condition. I could be wrong. Let me bring no the cap way. Up. Someone in the chat, maybe. Yeah, I'll just bring it up. You're, you're uh, right, Russ. Up. You're right. I'm looking at it right now. Yep. Uh, here it is. Yeah, Jake Gensel for with retention. Uh, Michael Bunting, which is kind of funny because he's got two. Bunting's got two more years <coughs> left at four and a half million, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, Vasily Ponomarev, probably saying that wrong. Cruz Lucius, Vili Koivinen, a second round pick conditional. Yeah, and that upgrades to a first if they make the Stanley Cup final, which I'm sure. They won't mind if they make the Stanley Cup final. Mm-hmm. Uh, might be a little difficult if they lose that. And have to, but I mean, if they're making the Stanley Cup final, that pick is uh, the thirty-first overall pick. <laughs> so, right? Yeah, I don't think. Or, that's what are, what are we? What are we really doing here? And yeah, and this, and everybody's saying that this draft isn't that deep. So, I think you're seeing a lot of. Uh, I or a lot of second round picks, not a lot of first round picks, a lot of mid level picks. You know, and, and, and at least according to Scott Wheeler, those are the sixth and ninth best prospects on Carolina. So they didn't even get again per Scott uh, uh, Scott Wheeler's rankings a top five prospect on Carolina, let alone oof. Yeah, great for Carolina, man. <clears throat> Outstanding for Carolina. Yeah, man, it's rentals aren't – they're not going that expensive this year. I remember the days it would be like Lee Stepniak for like a first-round pick. I know. <laughs> I'll never forget Paul Gostad went for a first. Remember the uh, Martin Erat trade for Phil Porter? One of the worst, one of the worst trades in hockey Ever. history. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what can't... was – what did – yeah, Still that can't was believe wild. That. What was Lindholm dealt, dealt for? Where's that trade? Uh, where's it at? Where's it at? I don't think it was a big return. Uh, man, where are you? Here it is. Oh, yeah. Kuzmenko. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, Hunter Brusiewicz, who's going crazy in the OHL and a first round pick. So I remember Lindholm went. First and the fourth can become a third. I wonder what Vancouver's doing. Yeah, I mean they they were somebody that there was those rumors around Lindholm. There's rumors around them with Gensel. You know, you wonder if there's still if there's still something going on that Vancouver's looking to add. I'm never going to think Vegas is done until they're actually done. Until somebody tells them and takes <laughs> right. their phones away. That Vegas they, is going to end up acquiring like. Freaking Sidney Crosby or something before. I well, they still right have room. Clock. I know they they still yeah. have room. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what's wild. And I mean, they, they have... got Hannafin on the cheap, yeah. Mantha on the cheap. Yeah, and they still yep. have room. That's what's wild. Um, socket to me, cake with the ten dollars super chats super chat. Thank socket you. to me, cake. I appreciate you. Uh, he asked, "Will Jim Hiller be back as the coach next season?" Seems mm. like this team really needs a head coach more than any other player. Um, or is ownership unwilling to spend more on this? Great show, by the way. Sock it to me, Thank you. I appreciate you. And, yeah, let's dive into this. Joe, what do you think? That's a great question because 
we we've agreed. I think we like what Hiller's done so far, particularly with the in-game adjustments, his willingness to kind of play players throughout the lineup. Um, it's hard to answer this question because when he came in, he wasn't going to do a huge system overhaul, right? We talked about that. It's a lot to do mid season, but I'm genuinely curious how he would really want to play if he had his say. Like, because we go into the summer, he's like, I'm changing how we play. We're going to tweak the system. So I think to answer the question, it probably comes down to um, the playoffs. If they win a playoff series, I think I wouldn't be surprised if they if they give him a nod. Um, the other side of this coin is what happens to Rob Blake because if a new coach, if a new GM comes in, it's conceivable that they want a new coach along with it. So it's a tough question to answer just because I don't know what Jim Hiller's like preference would be and how to play. You know, he's playing, he's doing what he's doing right now with what's been established, uh, and I think he's making the best of it. But I'm I'm. Interested. What is, what is, so you're there, Russ, a lot, obviously a lot more. I'm never there. Uh, you're in the room and around the ranks. W- what has it been uh, um, in the, in the media with him? Um, you know, and what's, what's your thought on that? Yeah, I actually really like Hiller. It seems like he's a very progressive thinker in terms of head coaches. And that might just be just comparing to him to McClellan and what we've been watching there where he just didn't <clears throat> want to make any adjustments. And I, I still remember the conversation. I forget after which game, but McClellan came into the media room, and one of the questions he was asked was, like, are you thinking about adjusting any of the lines? And he responded with, oh, some of the guys want to do that, but I think I just want them to f- kind of fight through it. And, yeah, so that was pretty much the case. And and I'm starting to think that Hiller was probably one of those guys that was probably <laughs> beating the drum of, like, hey, Let's change things up a little bit. So, yeah, just to kind of answer the socket to me cakes question, I, yeah, it all depends on the team's performance and whether or not Rob Blake's back next year. Because if Rob Blake's not here, then I'm guessing a new general manager is probably going to bring in his his the coach of his choosing. And Hiller might get a shot, might, might get an interview. I'm sure he's got a really good standing with the players that are here, and you're not going to get rid of any of the players. So, if you have a coach that's already built a good relationship with some of the players here, then you want to keep that coach intact. And it seems like he's doing a little bit more with that. And I think one of the biggest adjustments he's made is giving Quentin Byfield the freedom to be Quentin Byfield and giving him more ice time. So I'm loving what I'm seeing from Hiller this year. Uh, it's just all going to depend really on how the team performs in the playoffs. Follow-up question. If it is not Hiller, they brought on a former head coach and DJ Smith. He's been an assistant right now since Hiller came on. Do you think the Kings would look at DJ Smith as a candidate uh, or do they go outside? I see some names like, you know, Mike Sullivan is somebody who could be on the way out in Pittsburgh, depending on what happens there. Um, you know, do you think they look outside or keep it internal and not only DJ Smith, but Marco Sturm? Oh, man. I don't know if the fan base would be happy with Marco Sturm. Uh, Sturm was a McClellan guy, too, so that's kind of an odd kind of dynamic there. I don't know if they'd go with DJ Smith, because if Smith's going to stick around, he'd pretty much... He'd be like... Usurping? Usurping? I'm trying to say this word. Usurping? Usurping. Thank you. He'd be like usurping his buddy, his good old buddy Hiller, right? be taking his job and i don't know i don't i don't see jj smith doing that he'd probably stick around as the assistant coach unless he found a job himself somewhere Mm -hmm. because he's a coach so i think if yeah if let's just say that if rob blake is sticking around it's because this team had found some success in the playoffs and if the team finds success in the playoffs then they did it under jim hiller jim hiller is probably gonna end up sticking around too so I think to answer Sakatumi Kick's question, it's all going to be dependent on how the team does in the postseason to see what happens there. And then if they don't, probably going to see a new GM and a new head coach altogether. Um, and that would be a fun summer to watch. On <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Word of the day, Sai says, usurping. Yeah. 
I so I just saw a tweet from this is from uh, at Puck Report NHL that says Kevin Weeks on ESPN The Point says the Bruins thought they had something with Linus Allmark quote so there was a deal that it has sent that he essentially nixed uh, in large part based on geography I'm told end quote Ooh. Hmm. take that for whatever you will rumor monger geography huh. Hmm. Let me bring out. Let me let me envision the United States map real quick. Boston, L.A., pretty far <clears> apart. <throat> okay, some a lot of geography to deal with there, so that would make sense. I would wonder what that deal would be, though. I, I so I don't buy the PLD thing at all. By the way, no, that no, rumor. No. The, we that but, but we yeah. we did talk about this on the last pod. Is there a deal? Because the money's close. Of a Matt Roy plus something, Matt Roy plus a forward, Matt Roy plus a prospect, Matt Roy plus a pick. I, I don't know what that Matt Roy pl- the plus part of that is for Linus Allmark because I think Matt Roy would be a really nice addition for Boston as they look to bolster their blue line. Maybe in, in Matt Roy and Alex Turcotte for a team that maybe needs a center. Um, just again. I, I, I was, I was. Don't I, yell at Joe, guys. Don't yell at Joe. Don't. I, I get that a lot, but that, but I'm like, because <laughs> I threw the tweet out the other day about just genuinely curious. Is there, is there something there with Matt Roy and Linus Allmark just because of money and because of all that stuff? So I'm, I don't know. You know, I, I, I think it's more that. I think it would be more. Matt Roy, although I can see, I can understand the Bruins who need centers and the Dubois. Like I get that part, but I don't buy those rumors. And if they, if stuff comes out, it turns out that was the case, then I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But I don't know. I I don't, they have no, the, the Bruins don't have any cap space. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind too. They don't have any money. Uh, so adding a Dubois would be pretty tricky to me. Why? So, I'm like I I understand the conversation of the Kings like need to find a goaltender and and they don't really have a goaltender <clears> for the future until I guess Portillo or Sikinski. I mean they're still young obviously so until they come up. Mm-hmm. I just like I get so worried picking up any goaltender with money because it just feels like goaltending is so system based and I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here with you listening to me here Joe. Yeah, but. It's like you're getting good goaltending with Cam Talbot, who you're paying a million dollars. Why go out and utilize cap space? Not only cap space, which is just a huge thing in itself right there. You're utilizing that and assets to get a goaltender who you don't know if you're going to find that much more success with than what you're getting now. Right. What's the the point, right? I mean, if you want to pay – Olmark five million dollars. If you want to give him that five million and bring in that five million dollar cap it that he has for next year, I'd rather utilize that cap space to re-sign like an Arvidsson or a Matt Roy. Like, give me yeah. the better skater. Yeah, I I I tend to agree with that. I mean, I know I see Maxwell Churchville Swayman's better than Olmark anyway. Yeah, well, that's why boss is not going to trade Swayman. They're going to trade Olmark. Um, the only as I try to talk through the logic because I agree, Russ. I just don't think the trade really makes a lot of sense Um, because I think the goaltending has been okay. Where I can see the logic is it's, it's an uh, in talent. It's an upgrade, but in performance, is it going to be drastic? I don't know. Um, But you look ahead to next season. it, It does say that, okay, they don't have to worry about acquiring a goalie for the summer. They can shift their focus elsewhere. So maybe that having that kind of like comfort of saying, okay, we don't need to worry about goaltending and they can still go get a goalie on the cheap. So I actually don't think spending, so they would be, say they get another million dollar goalie next year. Say it's Cam Talbot for all we know, or David Riddich, you know, then you've got $6 million that you're spending on two goalies, which is very reasonable. I think that's very good. And the, the, what I will say about all Mark is where, and you know, I'm not a big into paying goalies well, for one year. I, I I'm good with that. You know, I, yeah. I don't want anything to do with le- like what Ottawa did with Corpus Allo, right? That's what, or what Pittsburgh did with Jari. That makes me really nervous. Oh, man, I um, was just kicking themselves with that <clears throat> deal right now. Yeah. So for one year, like I can, I can 
I can talk myself into the logic, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I think it has to be Roy in that deal. Um, but I, I don't know. I, if it was even, you know, a deal with Los Angeles, who knows, but like, think about it, yeah. Boston, Boston, who, you know, a little bit, I don't say depleted, but you know, they were a team that was going for cups and all that stuff and not so distant memory and the really good team last year they they lost their big guns they don't they're not rich in terms of like prospects i don't think uh particularly down the middle like could a roy and he's expiring so that doesn't like mm-hmm. to trade all mark you can't just take an expiring contract there's got to be more to that for boston well a young center and alex turcott makes a whole lot of sense and if, if you're the kings unless you're saying we're going to shift turcott to the wing you've got your four centers for next year too for the next couple of years so there, you could see if they think this is our goalie solution, it's worth it. I wouldn't do it, but I'm just saying, like, is that a, is that a conversation? I don't. Know. Yeah, and 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 Maxwell Church Churchill is coming in here saying Omar is 30 years old though. Yeah, and that's that's the thing too is you're not getting necessarily a goalie that's going to help you for the future. He's probably just going to help you for probably one year, if that. And I, I have to say, like, I've been really, really encouraged. <laughs> with the performance of Eric Portillo in the AHL. Uh, I think I said this on our last show, but I mean, his first year in the AHL has been outstanding. I think he's got like a 920 plus save percentage, two, three goals against average. He's 16, eight and three, I believe I could be wrong. But I mean, to see that, especially with where the, where we thought the Kings goaltending pipeline was just like a year ago, which was non-existent almost i'm encouraged and i wouldn't mind having portillo be not necessarily the starter but hey if you want to give him 15 20 games next year see how he does totally fine with that i mean he's what 24 25 i want to keep him i want to keep him down and maybe this is just me being extra cautious with the young goalie um but to your point though very very encouraging and listen if they if the if the goaltending coaches and the and the scouting staff determine he's ready for nhl action and then backup capacity or a call-up capacity um then then yeah by all means but i would do as much as i can to keep him down there for another season uh he's exceeded my expectations to start so i'm pumped about that yeah i also think we talked about this months ago, I think. I kind of want to get away from the goalie of the future thing. The Kings fans were pretty spoiled with Jonathan Quick, and they had him for however many years it was. But I don't think we should be, as fans, looking for the next Jonathan Quick. Just look at it on a short-term thing. You know, look at don't, – don't look at the goalie of the future as Eric Portillo. Look at the next two, three years at a time because mm-hmm. by doing the whole goalie of the future thing, that's how you get roped into some – some contracts that that could go sideways. So take take the goaltending position like a year to three at a time. Um, don't because <laughs> I see you want to avoid the the dark age of goaltending and a Zach the Kings fan. But how many goalies can you a quick quick in some years where he really wasn't that great? It's just it just coincided with the team being also pretty poorly. So I I. Yeah. I I, I don't want to just say I don't want to start anointing goalies of futures. Let's just take goalies kind of year by year. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what our thought process is behind the goaltending uh philosophy going forward for every team. I think that's what every team should feel like. Unless you got like a Thatcher Demko or Jake Otcher or Connor yep. Hellebuck. You know, okay, <laughs> lock those guys up. Those they're gonna be solid goalies every every night so you don't have to worry there but yeah and so you have those goalies then there's no point in giving yeah everyone's man of the world says cough peterson cough there's no point in giving a young goalie a long-term deal that's going to hamper your your club for five six years when he's not even on the roster so jimmy murphy uh he covers uh the boston bruins for boston hockey now just tweeted uh he's been reporting all along that the kings were after linus allmark um and he said on his bond boston hockey now that he did not think that or any trade out west would go through because allmark did not want to go west so connect the dots la may have very well indeed be 
uh, interested in Linus Allmark. Um, but he just didn't want to do it. So I wonder if there was a deal and, you know, wonder what that deal was. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I don't need to trade for Linus Allmark. I'm totally Agreed. cool if they don't. To Agreed. Be Resign Ta- Cam Talbot for another year for a million dollars. Give him ex- extend him right now for all I care. I, I, that's if a million dollars is nothing <laughs> for a gold center, especially with the quality that we've been getting for Talbot. Maybe if you're looking, maybe he could kind of survive the regular season. And if you're looking to upgrade at the deadline next year, maybe Olmark is available then. He can change his mind right. if he really wants to come west. Then you do that. I, I, Who knows? Yeah. Maybe Saros. I'll say Boston yeah. should should try to do it because yeah, for it sounds like they can, are right. They they could really use another um, some forward help or some D help for that matter. And there's no need to have two good goalies. And Kevin Weeks tweeted three minutes ago the eyeballs uh, with I saw that. the, I had with the it, Golden Knight. Yeah. So I had it tuned right. up. Here we go. Wonder what else they're gonna do. <laughs> Who's out there? Bushnevich. That's the big one right now. Bruce and it Navy. seemed like St. Louis was is more than willing to eat money on that deal. I'm um, yeah, there's got to be teams that are just kind of desperate at this point and are willing to do whatever. Who? It's got to be a list of. It's got to be, yeah. I mean, it's just it's got to be tough as you get down here for the last 24 minutes that these trades have to be called in by. Um, that. Matt Dumba yeah. just got traded to Tampa Bay. Okay, I was wondering if Dumba would wow. go. Man, so man, okay. Or what's the what's the playoff situation looking like right now? Who? Let me see. Because I would freaking, and I think all of us would be would love to see a Florida Tampa Bay playoff series. Cause Oh yeah. Oh man. That's actually what would happen right now. If that's the case, if the season ended right now, we'd get Tampa Bay, Florida round one. <laughs> Sign me up for that. Yeah. That would be outstanding. Um, yeah. Tampa, uh, Florida gets Matt Dumba. I'm, I've never been a Matt Dumba guy. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's, 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 that, you remember that, you remember that game where, when he was with Minnesota and Sean Walker went to like was standing in front of him and he just rips this clapper that's just goes straight up in the Sean Walker space. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like it was nowhere near the net. Like the guy's just like got like, I don't know. He's just such a reckless guy and such a reckless player. It's going to, I feel like that he's probably not even going to end up playing in the playoffs to be honest with you. I, yeah, I, I don't see, know what their man, depth if, looks like if, on the right side, but they were they were heavy after if um, Vegas Hannafin. Yeah, they were. Because Sergachev's hurt. If if the if Vegas ends up trading for like Frank Petrano, I I might lose my shit, to be honest with you. God, I hate that player. Vegas, they're they're gonna do something. I, I had the trade. Let me see. Three targets. Uh, here we go. I mean, I, 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 I'd be, yeah. I mean, it's got to be a forward. Still available. Yeah, we can see a reunion there. Yeah. Nick Dowd. You could see them going for like a Nick Dowd type. <laughs> God, it's just like such a yeah, Dalek. I remember when he. Sucker punched Phoenix Copley. Also, remember when he cross checked Trevor Moore in the back the other day? This guy's an idiot. Um, <laughs> man, yeah, Dennis Bernstein tweeted that Victor Arvidsson skated on his own. I think you mentioned that. I might have saw that. Uh, let's see, there's not many players available, so I'm not sure. It's been a lot of trades today, though. It's been a fun, it's, exciting. It's been a busy week, yeah. I mean, it, it's got to be. I, I usually they swing big, and I guess they kind of have with with uh, Hannafin already. But I, I, I certainly don't rule them out of the Buchnevich. I don't. Man. I don't rule them out of that. Vegas just like just happens to. Oh, they just always go for it. Just oh, you just like 
I'm just like waiting for them just to like never have the future assets to just make anything happen and sure enough here oh here's no if Hannafin and let's sign him to a seven eight year deal and we're fine there on the left side for a while already now listen it's, like I have said that I don't necessarily think that that there's a whole lot too because I think Mark Stone is genuinely hurt like I don't think it's fake but the tweets of Vince McMahon or Stone Cold Steve Austin the in the in the hitting Vince McMahon when he's in the hospital bed right around trade deadline time gets me literally every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. <laughs> it's yeah. It's like it's clockwork. Um Nav 21, ten dollar super chat. Nav, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate he it, Nav. Thank you, buddy. He wants to know. Do you guys sign Capo Kakinen for two years at three mil or less next year? Joe, what do you think? I'll think say you? I'll say yes because it's a two year deal, and I think Kakinen has a has had a good, respectable season and a brutal situation in San Jose. Um, I I'm not I don't I don't hate it now. The thing is, I just wonder if a goalie coming off of his deal gets a, a little bit more than that. I don't know. That's uh, I'm. Yeah, what is this deal right now, Russ? If you uh, do you know offhand? I was, I was, I have his stats ready. Let me get his, let me get his contract. You're asking a lot of me here, Joe. I can no. You get the stats. I'll get the contract. I got it. I got, I got it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. I, I got it. Right. Uh, he's got. Yeah, he's a penny free agent. Two point seven five million dollars. So he's Um, gonna get. So yeah, it's not right. He's probably gonna get at least the three. Does he take two for three? And a six, so it's a six million total deal, maybe. Um, I'm interested. The thing is, is, do you think a team would offer him that, that, more that, than two years? That's what I'm. So we're going to get to a point. I should, I said maybe we won't. I don't know where um, teams may be starting to go a, a, a little off of the goaltenders and starting to give them shorter deals. You look at what happened with some of these. With uh, you know, look at Corpusalo. I think there's a, a big you may start to see teams not want to be handing out these deals. The goalie I've always liked that's in San Jose, though, is Mackenzie Blackwood. Um, you have always liked him. I I am a Mackenzie Blackwood fan. I would prefer him, although he signed for next year, so that's not an option. <laughs> um, How much is he done for next year? Two and change. Okay. I mean, I'd rather eight. trade for a Blackwood than I would an Olmark. Because uh, Olmark would be much more yeah. expensive in terms of trade. Yeah, and I mean, Kakinen, I I am – he's been good this year. I don't think he was very good in Minnesota. I don't think he was very good when he was traded to San Jose or they signed him. I don't remember now which one it was. I'm not like the biggest fan of him, but for when you're talking that money – um, I'm almost in, I can almost make a case for anything, but I'd actually for the more I think about this, I'd rather not commit to Kakinen for literally more than one year if I have because yeah. if he if he has a if he goes back to being capital Kakinen like he was in Minnesota, I just I don't want him around. I want to be rid of him. I think men of the world says the best is Kakinen is a fringe goalie. We need certainty in that, and that's kind of what the Kings are going for is they're bringing in fringe goalies or at least this year they did that they brought yep. in fringe goalies and it's worked out for them so if you can bring in those type of goalies that you can sign like two million dollars or less on like a short-term deal and you can find value there and success with that that's a win right it's like but preferably that that is for one year you sign these yeah. talbots and your riddiches and your copleys and even and maybe Kakinen is is ever so slightly because of his age uh, above them, because like he's a decent chunk younger. Twenty seven. Okay, but you know I, I, tells me. I, yeah, I, I that's a deal where like you got to give him the extra year to win the to win the bid, but you might regret that extra year. So, I'm gonna say, after talking about it, I'm gonna say probably no. If it was a one year deal, Nav. Then I may be open to it. Yeah, if you can get him at like a one-year deal at, say, one point five, I guess I'd be open to it. 
I don't expect the team to throw any money at this guy. I mean, you're probably going to look at his numbers, and I mean, he's got a career 3.36 goals against average and a career sub 900 save percentage. So I know he's been on bad teams, so it's kind of hard to say that those numbers really are who he is. But but his his goal save above expected per sixty is not great. Like it's not horrible, but it's well. It's 44th in the league. Like it's, it's in the negative. That's, yeah. Overall. And that's, and, but I mean, but this is where you could probably find him or sign him to a cheaper deal. You can utilize those numbers, sign him to a cheaper deal, and then maybe you yep. find success in the <clears throat> system, right? Yep. Correct. Correct. I that's keep going back to Kevin Lankinen. I think he's on an expiring deal in Nashville. Is that, am I, yeah, he's a UFA, made $2 million. He's been a backup but kind of quietly under the radar continues to have decent goal save above expected numbers. Um, and so he's a target of mine heading into the off season is between the pipes as Kevin Lankin and assuming they try to go for this kind of cheap route again. I could see him being like the, uh, maybe a backup kind of option, third kind of Riddick option. If they really want to, I mean, the Kings have been really, are usually really patient with their prospects and I'm sure going to be even more patient with their uh um goalie prospects so i would envision that to be the case for their goaltenders we got the matt dumba deal um okay he went went to the bolts for a fifth round pick is that a 2027th fifth round pick does that say yeah. sweet jesus Man, holy cow! The Coyotes are an interesting bunch. They really are. I thought they'd be a lot better than they were this year. They kind of. I know you said Dursey's been having a good year. I think he's been. I think he's been Sean Dursey. He's pretty much Sean Dursey what he was with the Kings last year. Same player, he's just getting more ice time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, <clears throat> anything else going on? What else do we got? Going the on? Penguins acquired a player. I don't know if he's real. Um, Ludovic <laughs> Weber and a conditional pick for Magnus Helberg. So that's that. I hope there's a bigger one at the end of the deadline than that. <laughs> Magnus Helberg, <clears throat> name sound, is he a goalie? He's a goalie, right? He could be wrong. So. I know there was a let me see. Grab with he's a he's a funny guy. He, Kyle Davis just making up guys now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Weber is a goalie. That Ludovic Weber is okay. a uh, go. Who was that trade with Florida? Yeah, Magnus Helbert. I'm pretty sure he's a goalie. I think so. Feels like it looks like a swap of depth goalies. Sir Volley just tweeted that. <clears throat> uh, um, Patch Ready is staying in Washington, surprisingly. Huh. Hmm. Helberg is a goal, by the way. Helberg is a goal. There's always, there's always, there's always like pending UFAs that everybody just expects to get dealt every year. And then there's like one or two that just don't, and everybody's stunned. And I'm, yeah, I, I'm with you. Like, I, I, why not? But I don't know. What have the Rangers done? Uh, they added Wenberg. But that's a team that's been quiet for where yeah. they are and what they're looking to do. Uh, I think they were in on Gensel. Um, <clears throat> but they needed a center, and they added Alex Wenberg, who I, I think is a, will be a good third-line center for them. Um, but I think – I'm like Frank Vitrano, I thought would have been good to go back there. Oh, they added Chad Ruedel. I was wondering. I saw a tweet about Chad Ruedel and didn't know. Okay, so Chad Ruedel. I love a, that name. Yeah, I can't believe he was to be in Buffalo at what seems like 20 years ago, and he's still in the NHL, but he's still only 33. It seems like he's been around forever. So they've added Ruedel. a depth a depth demon and a third line center. Hmm. That's a team I feel like just can't get out of their own way. Mm hmm. It could be so much better. Man, the East is 
I know that we're talking about the West, but the East is just as. Oh, speak of the devil. Let me bring this up here. We were just talking about the Rangers, and they just acquired Jack Roslovic from Columbus in exchange for a mid round pick in 2026. There you go. They needed another center. Perfect. And then they got one. Yep. Look at that. Are you, are you, do you know the lottery numbers? Can you tell me that? <laughs> like 500 million out here. And, and, and Roslovic, I've always kind of liked as a player, but he's never really taken like that step that I thought. Traded for Line A, right? He was in the Line A Dubois deal. Yep. Yep. That's right. He, it was Line A. It was Roslovic and Dubois for Line A. Yep. And I remember thinking, I said, Columbus, this was an incredible deal for, um, wait a minute. No, it was an incredible deal for Winnipeg because they got Dubois on the deal. Um, and Roslovic because, was such an underrated player, too. At the time. He, he was producing. He, he, Right, he he was, uh, and I, and maybe in a, in a different opportunity here with the Rangers, um, it'll work. But Holden ninety two says it is really disappointing that we're the only team in a playoff spot to not make any trades. Yes, I think the I Kings and the Islanders are the only teams that haven't made a deal yet. And we'll have that conversation. I know you, you got to go a little bit after 12 o'clock, so we'll, we'll make it brief, but we'll have that. We still got nine minutes left. So who knows? Yeah, I got to, I can, happen. I got till about 12, 15, maybe a little later. We'll see. Okay. So we'll, we'll have that conversation. If the Kings do end up standing pat, we'll talk about what we feel like, uh, Rob Blake is thinking there, but I mean, yeah, it is. It's kind of funny. Cause I mean, yeah, the Western conference, every team, it seems like every team in the West, I mean, not that it seems like every team in the West has made a deal to improve their team. Even Nashville, who was who traded off Trenton to Colorado, and Colorado is just man, that's that's a team to to watch in the in the playoffs. But even Nashville brought in um, Zucker, right? Yeah, they just brought in yep. Jason Zucker for six rounders. So it's not like they're necessarily bowing out; they're trying to still improve a little bit. Dave Pignota of the fourth period. Um... Says Vegas making traction on another big move for a player with term. We'll see if they can get it to the finish line as there's only 10 minutes left. Uh, I mean, that just, it's got to be Buchnevich. Does Buchnevich have term though? Mm -hmm. He's got, mm -hmm. oh, he does. He does. Absolutely. Which is just fantastic that you're going to have to deal with him too for the next couple of years if that gets done. He's got one more year left after this one. That's that's I mean I love the player I love the deals for the term guys. I know that's hard. I know it probably costs more, but that's my target if I'm GMs. Like we talked about this the other day about targeting your chickens and and sometimes these guys aren't available, but th these guys with term I think is are so important. Yeah, I feel like that's how Rob Blake is thinking too. Uh he just Okay, so Rosovich played a lot he's been playing a lot of wing this year so maybe maybe it's not us but either way it's a you know middle six type of forward uh i i gotta imagine ranger fans are a little disappointed if they end out of this deadline to your point russ that this is a team that's probably ready to do a little bit more and they come out of the with roslovic wenberg and chad ruedel like eh, a little underwhelming maybe yeah <laughs> i'm sure that's probably how they're feeling too i mean they got a decent team so just never really seemed to put it together. It's, it's kind of funny how Detroit really hasn't done anything either. Besides, they made the Patty Kane move early on, and that seems I, to be working out pretty well for them. But I am not in on them, and I think who do they match up with right now? Detroit matches up with the Rangers. It looks like, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know what? Uh, I think the Rangers. Be... I think the Rangers win that. Uh, and because the Rangers got a little unlucky, they ran her into freaking New Jersey last year, who was just a better team. But Frank said, is... Oilers are done, they're done. He says, Oilers are done. Surprising, actually. I thought they'd make another move. This Speaking of the Oilers, guy. could it have been the Oilers, maybe that that Linus Allmark? Maybe no, I feel like they like Skinner. <clears throat> yeah, me too. They still have to, they're still paying Campbell, too. Yes. They're going to have to ride Skinner, and hopefully they get the best out of him in the playoffs. You know I'm a Skinner guy. I think he's fine. 
At least great, but he's a good goalie. The the thing is with with a goalie like that is it's the consistency, right? That's why these guys, there's so few of these guys that you can consistently count on being stars, like a Vasilevsky and a Hellebeck and so on, where you can get that level of play, like great play from Skinner, though. It's just you can also not get that, and that could be what is your undoing if it's bad Skinner in playoffs. That's the exactly. that's the, the dice roll, but it's so hard to find any consistent goalie. So, well, the only problem with them is I don't I don't trust the Oilers defense if they're in like shootouts with teams. I don't trust their goaltending to keep them in in games. Uh, it's just when when they've gone up. I think what's been the downfall of the Kings is the Kings aren't that necessarily highly powered offensive team that can yeah constantly it's tough to chase them can't chase put, Edmonton yeah constantly put pressure on Skinner um and of course they really know what their offensive firepower is yeah yeah that's that's the the tough part for the Kings is is if you match up against a, a team like an an Edmonton it's tough to chase them. What's even more scary is if you play a team like Dallas, who not only can score, but then you look at oh their my back God. end and the goalies. Oh boy, what happened? Bushnevich is, is no. it Bushnevich? No. This. Oh my God, this is this. If I'm, this not gonna, I'm not even gonna. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna lurk. Don't look. I'm, don't I'm don't, don't look. I'm gonna, I want to get your. I want to get your genuine reaction. Nobody. Nobody tell him. I'm closing the chat. Oh my God! Oh my God! And for a second, I thought Hurdle was there to to rot in San Jose for the next six years or whatever he's got left on his deal. Would you know it? He's on IR too. <laughs> Holy cow! That's interesting. Jesus Christ, man. How many years is he left? He just resigned what? there. He did. Yeah, he just signed like a seven year deal or an eight year deal. Who, yeah. What prospects do they have to get? The Caden Korzak, probably Cormier. McKenzie is confirming pending trade call. Where's San Jose? Thomas Hurdle. Oh, my God, man. How can you not? If you're a so Vegas just fan. two weeks ago, Vegas. <clears throat> Had lost Eichel and Stone. Everyone's like thinking, like, "Oh, maybe this will be the year that they just like kind of take a back seat." No, <laughs> we'll bring in Mantha. We'll bring in Noah Hannafin. And now they're working on bringing in Tomas Hurtle, and he's signed. Get this, guys, to the end of 2030. Had just so signed. There's no way. New deal. One, two, three, four, five, six years left on his deal. Like they can't eat, they can't um, retain retain money. No, there's no. I way. mean, they can, but they're not going to do that, are they? How can they fit that under the cap? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, man! Right is now, it's as Vegas has five on... million dollars in cap space. Maybe they are going to retain a little bit. Is it, is it, are they on LTIR or just IR? Uh, hurdles on just IR, not LTIR. Huh. <clears throat> maybe they maybe they're moving him to LTIR. Oh, there, there's your there's your defenseman going to Winnipeg. Winnipeg is acquiring Colin Miller. Okay. Yeah. I. Boy, oh boy. Every team just chipping in, chipping in, chipping in. I, I got to see this return for freaking hurdle. I mean, holy, crap. take the, take, take the King's hat off for a second. How do you not love the Vegas golden Knights and how they operate? Oh dude, if you're, Dude, if you're a fan, it's like Christmas is like every year, or like every trade deadline is Christmas. <laughs> they're like the Yankees. Like, oh, what, they're, what new presents am I going to open up today? They're finding a way to what, be the which Yankees tiny new in, toy am I going to be able to play with for the next month and a half? Like, what, what, what is going to come up on my doorstep? <clears> but, dude, I'm looking at their stuff. Like, are they going to get rid of Barbashev? Is Marshall going the other way? What is like, I don't understand. 
How are they going to fit Hurdle underneath the cap? Um, this is going to be an insane. Move. I wonder if Chandler Stevenson what? is in the deal. He's been a good player for them, but I think he's having a little bit of a down season. Just spitballing. I don't. If you're San Jose, why? Why? He's on an expiring deal, so I mean, I imagine there's picks coming or something too. I, I guess I don't know what the. Uh, Maybe they I don't know what the, I mean, I don't know what the although Chandler Stevenson's a good I mean he's not Thomas Hurdle, but he's a he's a good player. But to your point, how do they what do they bring in? Ding ding ding, by the way. What? It's deadline. The deadline is here, so we'll see what trickles oh. in oh, yeah. after. Sweet. Um, I can't wait. Noon. Eric Eric just he types in the chat. He just says noon. <laughs> I feel like I can hear the bell tower like going off right now. Just... I uh would love that's a, to such know. a wild trade to come at the like last second of the deadline. That's that feels like that would be such a s summer move. And of course, man, out of nowhere. <laughs> I love this team. I feel like Nick Waugh would probably be involved in that deal. He's got three more years left at $3 million. He's a good piece, but he's probably not like because a center. He's, he's a, yeah, he's, he's a, he's, we talk about some of the best fourth line centers in the game. He's one of them. Uh, yeah. But you wonder if that just bumps down, if they're getting hurdle, if that bumps down, or who knows? I wonder if that means, um, Maybe he's on the wing. I, I yeah, yes, we'll see who who goes out in the deal. <clears throat> Fascinating. Just oh my god, it's insane. <laughs> I'm 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 floored. I love when I love deals seeing deals like this come at the last minute, but not, not when it's a team in, in the same division. I mean, look at the, look at this. Imagine you're Vancouver. Hey, we're back back in the playoffs, top of the Western Conference. Your projected first round matchup is going to be the Vegas Golden Knights. Have fun with that. <laughs> Are you joking? Six more years at eight million. I love that Bob McKenzie is the one to break that news too. It's like I know. Like, Sending off into the sunset, like here. Let me just drop this. Mike, drop. I mean, I'm out. What a freaking player to add! We talked about. Is he the best player to go? Did Vegas oh. acquire the best two players in in Hurdle and Hannafin? I don't know where you put Gensel, but did Vegas acquire the best two players available? This this Gensel deadline? might be a better player, more impactful player than Hannafin, but. I mean, if you're looking for the best defenseman, it's Hannafin. So they got the best forward and the best defenseman. Best defenseman. <laughs> okay. Wow. On term. And it sounds like they're going to re-sign Hannafin. Oh, did they? I didn't see that. Uh, well, that's been the rumor. It hasn't happened. Okay. In confirmation, okay. But... Dude. Pinona says first rounders are going back for, I mean, I would imagine so, for Hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. But, there's, but why, I wonder good. what else, how do they make the contract fit? That's <clears throat> fascinating. Uh, so, per Puckpedia, after sending down Morelli and Froze, Freeze, Froze, Vegas has seven, just over seven million cap space in LTIR. That is hurdle, but still makes more than that. Um, so he Puckpedia suggests there may not have to be anybody out. They could Howden Carrier Dorfaya Martinez could go to LTIR for the short term. So they don't maybe have to trade anybody off the roster. That's that's so crazy. Capitals uh, are done for the day. That's the Capitals. I was I thought it was Canucks. Sorry. Canucks are done for the day. Someone said that too. Okay, yeah, Tom. I just saw that Thomas Trance. And Capitals too. Yeah. Six more years remaining at eight point one three seven five million dollars. Because if if they retain, they retain for every year, right? They're not. Yeah, they're not going to retain. I can't That'd be imagine stupid by San Jose. 
That would be stupid. I, well, remember I, they remember they didn't. If I'm a GM, I'd be so pissed. I'd be so pissed if if San Jose retained money on a a deal for Hurdle at six years for in the same division. Like, what are you doing? I I, I highly doubt that's happening. Yeah, they're gonna have to send Carter score says uh, or Leib says from Carter score via Carter scores says they're maxed out on pro contracts, so Vegas would have to send at least one player back. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rob Blake's gonna have some press conference, and <laughs> nobody's gonna be paying attention or even care what he probably has to say because he's probably be like, "Oh yeah, we're we, we're up against the cap. We don't want to make any moves." Blah blah blah. Cap friendly has him at 48 contracts um, before this, which gives them two to work with. But I guess I don't know. We'll see. But this is awesome. Uh, I'm glad that it doesn't seem that the Kings and the Golden Knights could play each other in the first round. So at least there's that. Because I don't see Edmonton going anywhere. Because it'd be Edmonton or Vancouver probably get the first or second seed. And then Kings or Vegas get in the third seed. <laughs> At this point, let's just lose out and try to get like the first wild card or second wild card. We'd be totally fine with that. Oilers are done. I Man. like there were times I was I was for a second I'd feel bad for Hurdle. I'm like, you signed the deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, if you or your your agent weren't smart enough to see what was going on in San Jose, that's on you. But then he gets bailed out and gets traded to Vegas. Man, props to Vegas, man. They have to. <clears throat> have to. Do I? Unfortunately, <laughs> just the same, man. It's like it seems like they get like they have no real. I guess they have decent prospects: Daniel Cheka, defenseman; Lucas Cormier, Caden Korzak, all pretty solid defensemen. Yeah, San Jose. If I'm them, like trading hurdles just makes all the sense in the world. Just, I would guess maybe Brisson is probably involved in that deal. <laughs> Two. Just full of riches, right? Seriously. Good God. Oh, uh, OC Steve asked with a two dollar super chat. OC Steve, appreciate you, man. Thanks, OC Steve. He said, he says Blake does nothing. You ate. You think he probably says you think age. He told him no trades. So. I mean, Ugh. I guess we can dive into, it seems like, and I'll just say seems like with quotations because we don't know. I mean, there could be a trade that comes in the last second. But it certainly feels like the Kings do nothing today. Joe, first of all, do you think AEG told them no trades? And I don't think I so. I ask you. Yeah, I don't think so either. I, I think that he probably still had freedom to make moves and improve the team if he wanted to. So I don't think that's the case. I think it's more or less, oh, I mean, I wouldn't rule out the possibility, but I don't think he was just given put on a leash and told not to, to do anything. Uh, Agreed. So I'd be yeah. like 95, 99% sure about that. Like if he if he's the, he's the GM, if he had a chance to make a move, I'm sure he would have had the say-so to do, to, to do that. But Kings make seems like the Kings stay quiet for the trade deadline. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I'm not shocked. Um, I think they obviously had no wiggle room cap space and there would have had to have been an appetite to trade Matt Roy in order to do that. Um, we, the all mark rumors, I don't believe the PLD rumors, but I wonder if if the Allmark and Kings rumors were um, true, that maybe it would have been Matt Roy. Um, 
I don't know. Um, if there was not, it would be interesting to see is if they do try to sign Matt Roy and what that means for the future um, of the blue line. But not all that surprising when you look at what the um, the cap situation was. It would have been really difficult for them to do anything major. Um, was wondering if there was going to be something small. A little surprised Arthur Kaliev uh, didn't get dealt. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I can't say I'm surprised. I just want to bring this up. Look at this bad boy. Two firsts for Hurdle. ESPN, two firsts for Hurdle, and there's heavy salary retention. Oof. Well, you know what? Hey, listen. I can't hate Greer for giving salary retention on this one because he didn't on the Carlson deal, and he got less because of it. But man, this is a long time to retain salary. It's six years. <laughs> You're getting two first round picks that are probably going to be in the high 25s, high 30s. Oh, Friedman just said David Edstrom is a key part of the trade to San Jose from Vegas. I don't David know. David Edstrom. I don't even know who David Edstrom is, to be honest. Let's with you. take a peek I could here. Be wrong. I mean, Vegas is not, as you can imagine, known of, of having. He is their top prospect. Um, oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he is the top prospect, according to Scott Wheeler, on what is considered the 23rd best prospect pool, in his opinion. But again, we've. this is two opposite organizations. When you look at Vegas – doesn't know what a prospect is and the Kings hug and squeeze these things so tightly. And then they maybe develop into an NHLer. I mean, Byfield appears to be blossoming. We'll see what Turcotte comes into, but what, you know, we talked about this with the Eichel deal a couple of years ago, stop hugging your prospects because it's going to hold you back if they don't pan out. And sure enough, One first round pick. Okay, it's not heavy retention. It's seventeen percent retain. Okay, like, let's let's chill out there. <clears throat> okay, still six point seven my five million dollar cap hit. That's that's not that much for her. So so first a first round in pick 25. in twenty five. So that's going to be still a good pick because San Jose is going to stink next year. Or excuse me. No, it's going to be Vegas. It's coming from yeah. Vegas. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, first round pick, but they get, we talked about this earlier, where they get the top prospect on the team's organization. You know, I don't know where, where Edstrom stacks up, like, overall prospect-wise, but he's they, they got Vegas' best, best guy. <clears throat> so, prospect-wise, that is. It's a great deal for Vegas. There's no other way to put it. You know, San Jose, I guess – if they were, you know, I, I like the idea of Greer fl- giving himself that flexibility rather than have eight years tied up for, you know, six more years as they try to go through their rebuild. Yeah. You know, I can sort of understand their mindset here, especially if they can get what they were hoping for. Get, they get a top prospect, and that's now a team that's starting to percolate in terms of prospect wise. Um, but boy, that's, there's just very little talent there. So little talent there. In the NHL. Oh, <clears throat> I mean, I, it's just wild that they were able to do that. Oh, Frank Saravalli, look at this. Okay, so he kind of confirms. I was just about to say, it's it's just crazy that they were able to do that without giving up a roster player in return. But look at this. Fascinating day for the NHL Bruins. Sounds like they had a deal on the table to move Olmark to the Kings that didn't end up crossing the finish line. There you go. So kind of what we expected. I don't right? think it was I I would be I don't think it was for Dubois. I think it was for my my I think it was for Matt Roy. I think there was a deal around Matt Roy. But I don't know. who knows? Maybe it I was like it probably maybe been, it was Dubois. I, pro- I feel like it could have been for like Spence. I feel like I really feel like the Kings want to keep Matt Roy around for some reason. I just really feel like that's the case. You could be right. 
Some of these comments are hilarious. Yeah, you, you're actually probably right. So here's here's Dennis Bernstein says uh, no deadline deals for Blake. He did not consider selling off parts, and he puts in parentheses Matt Roy speculation. So maybe you're yeah. right. Maybe it was a Jordan Spence, which would have just I mean to trade Jordan Spence for a goalie. If that's if 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 and I we don't know. Okay, maybe it was PLD. Maybe it was Jordan Spence. I'm gonna say right now though, if it was Jordan Spence. For a goalie, you got to seriously question the Kings' evaluation of. I mean, yeah, and it's, and total, it's total, total speculation, but it I mean, is, it is, it is. It could have just been like a couple picks or something, and sure, yep. Sounds like Omar kind of mixed it. It's true. It's true. Which um, I'm surprising even Boston would want to entertain the idea of trading Omar now, as opposed to just waiting till the summer. I mean, you have. Unless maybe Riddick moved the other way. And it'd probably been like a Riddick and like a third round pick or something crazy. Like, I don't expect a goalie with five million. Eh, it doesn't a winner. Maybe it could have been a little bit more than that. I mean, they they have the other goal. They have Swayman. And, they, and this is a team that needs more on the actual skating roster part. So I definitely understand Boston looking to move on from them. Um, yeah, I guess my thing is how they had to know that he wasn't going to go west. Like they, yeah. Like so, I'm like <clears> wondering <throat> what that conversation even like. Do you even talk to the player before you even consider trading him? Like, hey, we're having conversations with the Kings. What do you? What is your say at that point? And then he would just be like, "No, I'm not going over there." Right. Why right. even like have those conversations with the GMs if you're if the player is just going to nix it right away? Well, some things to digest, that's for sure. Um, I, I will be curious to hear if there's ever something that trickles out about who was going the other way from L.A. Yeah. for Allmark. Yeah. Well, Russ, I am going to bow out here at this stage. Uh, I've got to get the boy off the bus. So excellent job. Excellent job, Russ. And I cannot thank, I don't know what we're up to at this point, and I know we've had a lot of people watching throughout. Just can't thank the Hockey Royalty mm -hmm. listeners enough. This has been fantastic. Your chat the, in the chat has been great. Um, keep it coming, Russ, if you're going to stay on and, and talk a bit more by all means. I'll we'll um, stick around for a little bit longer. Just kind of yeah. talk about this, see if anything else so trickles in. But, yeah. Stick around and talk to Russ. I've got to run. But, Russ, great job. Uh, and appreciate the Hockey Royalty fans. Again, thank you guys. It's fantastic. So enjoy the rest of the show with Russ. See you guys. Thanks, Joe. So, guys, you're stuck with me now. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to stick on here for a little bit longer just in case something true. We'll stay on here till 30 past the hour. So we got 12 more minutes here. And it seems like the Kings are indeed staying quiet. Nothing happening. Um. I guess that's not necessarily surprising. It's just makes it a little bit more disappointing because of what everyone else is doing. Right. And I understand like, see like Holden, I totally get it. You see teams like obviously Vegas is just outstanding how they're able to pull stuff like this off. Um, yeah. Johnny Utah says Blake just said no trades. So this is it. This is the team. Whether you guys or anybody thinks it's good enough to win playoff series, obviously remains to be seen. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that they can't win a playoff series because we've seen this team, I mean, show resiliency and be able to be successful, uh, I guess, behind the eight ball. But, I mean, we're seeing a lot of teams load up on players, and that's great. Yeah, I mean, when they have the GMs and the ownership that are, are willing to make the moves that are trying to win now, they're going to do that. So Rob Blake made his big move over the summer. That's number 80, Mr. P.L. Dubois. That's going to be his, whether his fault or if, if the, is, that's going to be his problem if the Kings don't do or aren't successful in the playoffs or if they are successful in the playoffs, then 
who knows? Maybe they surprise us, and and that's his uh, and that makes him look pretty good, I guess. But yeah, I think I I agree, chicken stew. If they don't do well in the playoffs, could lead to his firing and his downfall. You already fired the coach after you just re-signed your past coach and Todd McClellan to another year. So you're paying, you'd have to pay essentially two coaches next year, no matter what. If you aren't able to find success after trading some assets, and I don't think the assets they traded were that much. I feel like everybody's kind of overblowing it. Like Velarde's hurt again. Rasmus Kapari can barely even find, he might not even play in the playoffs for them. Alex I follow isn't even scoring. He's just looking like a depth piece who's being paid $4 million. Um, but you did have to pay, you did have to get rid of Sean Dersey to do so. I, I was higher on Sean Dersey than most. We turned him in the second round pick, and that second round pick was flipped in that trade. You had to bow out of the Cal Peterson extension that he gave by trading a player in Sean Walker that was eventually traded for a first round pick at this deadline, even though he had or Philadelphia had to take on Ryan Johansson in return. So these are this is the bed that Rob Blake made and now he's gonna have to lie in it. And he better hope and pray that this team can find some success in the playoffs. Cause if it they don't, then a lot of Kings fans, including myself, are gonna be asking for some change. It's the nature of the business, right? Two straight years going up against Edmonton in, in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you're not able to find success after you just traded for a player that you said is going to be make you stronger down the middle, going to make you more competitive against teams like Edmonton. So you're pretty much building a team to find success against who you're expected to play against in the playoffs. If you don't find that success, done. Done. Can't. Can't do it anymore. Third time is the charm. If that's not the case, out. Something new. Something's got to change. Whether it be new strategy in terms of how they play, whether it be new strategy and approach and how they bring back players, how they utilize their prospects, how they play their prospects, how do they value their prospects, their picks. Can't do it anymore. How much longer are we going to be sitting in purgatory? It's been 10 years since they won a playoff series. How much longer do we have to wait? Just making the playoffs is not good enough. It's not good enough. So you better figure out a way to find some success in the playoffs this year or else that's it. You guys are done. I understand it. I'm done. This is what we're hanging our hat on. And I'm not going to say that this team can't do it. Look at the lineup when they're healthy. Quinn Byfield is turning into an absolute stud. Great. Andre Kopitar still playing at a high level. We've got him signed for two more years. Who knows how much longer that's going to go. But for this year, still Andre Kopitar. Great. Adrian Kepe is going to come back this season. He's been looking pretty solid. He's turning into an all-around player. He's been successful in the playoffs too. Awesome. Kevin Fiala? Outstanding. P.L. Deneau, playoff guy. Trevor Moore, who's having a breakout year. Arvidsson, we'll see what happens. Laferriere, I'm very excited to see how Alex Laferriere plays in the playoffs. I feel, I feel like he's built for the playoffs. I just, I'm so stoked to see what happens with that kind of player in the playoffs. But P.L. Dubois, who knows? If you didn't bring him in to be successful in the regular season, that's fine. You're, you're, I mean, the last time we talked to Rob Blake, we were asking about P.L. Dubois. He pointed to his per 60 numbers, his five on five per 60 numbers. And I remember he said at least his five on five per 60 numbers are comparable to what he's doing in Winnipeg. Okay, cool. Awesome. But we're talking about the playoffs. Dubois has got to be successful in the playoffs. Has to be. He had a great game last night, I thought. Great end to the game. Scored a goal. Excellent back check on three on three. I want to see that for the full game. Full 60 minutes. Don't give, uh, don't give me little spurts of Dubois. I need it for the full game. If you're going to go up against, if you're going to be 
playing. It certainly looks like the Kings are going to be a third seed or even a wild card seed. So you're going to end up starting the playoffs on the road. So if your first game, if game one starts in Edmonton, I already know what's going to happen. The second Dubois heads up on the ice, the second Andreas England heads up on the ice, 97 and 29 are going to be following him right behind. I don't even know why I still have this on here because I'm, let me remove this. There we go. So, yeah. You built this team to have success in the playoffs and to go up against teams like Edmonton, to go up against teams like Vegas, to beat teams like Colorado. If that doesn't happen after you forfeited all of the future, and that's not, I'm not, I don't want to say forfeited all the future, after you forfeited some of the future, after you had to forfeit Sean Dursey, who turned into a great, solid defenseman in the NHL, has looked really good for Arizona. If you turn those assets into what you have now and it doesn't turn into success in the playoffs, then change has got to happen. That's where we're at. It's the nature of the business. Sorry. Not sorry. 10 years. 10 years since they won a playoff series. So show me some progression. Show me some improvement. Because this fan base, and myself included, cannot go through another year of losing to Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of playoffs again. Three times. Can't happen. Because who knows? You could. We're probably going to play Edmonton again next year. The way the playoff system's format's set up, right? If Vancouver or Vegas, if Vegas continues to if they figure it out in the regular season end up winning the president or the division it's probably going to be edmonton la again or even edmonton vancouver who knows but these are the teams that you built to have success against and you're going to end up facing them against in the playoffs in the first round going forward they're not going to go away edmonton's never going to go away Connor mcdavid's always going to be there if you can't figure out a way to beat them you need to find someone else that can So it's exciting to watch Quentin Byfield. I'm excited to see his resurgence in the regular season be shown in the playoffs. I'm excited for that. But, I mean, yeah. Dubois was brought in here to be the player that puts the Kings over the top. I think the team is good enough, but it remains to be seen whether they can do it, to be honest with you. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But man, I, t- tomorrow night, right? First test, we're out the gates. Dallas Stars in the building. You get one of the best teams in the Western Conference right away, right after the trade deadline, after you just stood pat and did nothing, after you watched every Pacific Division team. Edmonton Oilers, uh, Adam Henrique, Sam Carrick. Not too much, but Adam Henrique's a solid player. He's been in the playoffs before. Vancouver, they picked up Lindholm. Remains to be seen. I'm, I'm not really that high in Vancouver, but hey, they, they did something. They tried to improve their team. Vegas. Do I even need to mention what Vegas did? Thomas Hurdle, Noah Hannafin, Anthony Mantha. They're set. Mark Stone's probably going to come back. <laughs> Good luck facing them in the first round. Colorado is loading up. Dallas, they got their guy in Tanev. Even Nashville made a move. Winnipeg made moves. You do nothing. So the last trade you made is for 80. And if 80 doesn't perform, then we're that's it. Sorry. No more patience at that point. Still got the rest of the regular season to look forward to. I'm excited. Not going to ever count this team out because they've shown the resilience to when they are counted out, they can bounce back. And I think they're a better team than they are next year. But unfortunately, some of the other teams around them have gotten better too. So it's just a wait and see. Wait and see. But you guys, it is 1229. I said I would go here till 1230. I think this is a good ending point. So for the 100 plus people that have been in here, you guys are the best. I appreciate everybody in the chat. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in for our special 
NHL trade deadline, Hockey World to Live. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We do this for free. You guys like Kings talking Kings hockey? I love talking Kings hockey. So if you guys want to repay the favor, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'll be at the game tomorrow night. If you see the, if you see me walking around the game, say what's up. Give me a dap. Give me a pat on the back. Let's have a hug. Let's hope for uh, some better future success and some better success in the playoffs. So I'm going to sign off, go get some lunch, and have a good one. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. King Stars. See ya.